Welcome to Stories with Soul. I am your host, Jamie Ice, musician turned entrepreneur and co-founder of 6th Ave Homes and 6th Ave Storytelling. Over the past 10 years, I have launched multiple successful businesses and have become obsessed with all things entrepreneurship and marketing. I've been on a personal quest to unpack what it takes to make and grow a great brand. One thing that I've discovered is that stories are powerful and that storytelling has the power to set a brand apart. Join me as I dive into the stories of the heavy hitting leaders, entrepreneurs, artists, and business owners in our community to hear their biggest wins, greatest losses, and their best business secrets. There's a story behind every great brand. Welcome to Stories with Soul. Stories with Soul is brought to you by 6th Ave Storytelling, an organic marketing company building standout brands on the foundation of story. We help small businesses grow by crafting and sharing their stories because when small business thrives, cities and communities prosper. Stories with Soul is brought to you by the Fort Worth Business Press, your source for news and business information in and around Fort Worth. Sign up for the Business Press's twice daily newsletter or become an insider using the storytelling coupon code STORYTELLING10, all one word, to stay up to date with the people, companies, and issues that matter most to Fort Worth. Head to fortworthbusiness.com to subscribe. I am a huge fan of the Business Press. I've been a subscriber for years. It keeps me up to date with everything that is going on in Fort Worth. Love it. Go subscribe for the newsletter. You won't regret it. Welcome to Stories with Soul. I am your host, Jamie Ice. I'm joined by Jimmy Williams. And we have a very special guest. My friend Mark Istook is in the house, who is an Emmy-nominated broadcaster with 20 years of experience on local and national television and radio. His career has taken him to Super Bowls, red carpets for the Oscars, Emmys. You were just on the Emmys. I saw that. Grammys around the globe. He's covered news, sports, entertainment. He's currently the anchor on Daybreak on WFA, which is an ABC affiliate. Prior to that, uh, you spent five years covering football in Los Angeles at the NFL Network. Uh, graduate from TCU, so you're, you're a home, home, hometown Go Fort Worthian. Uh, from there, you you went and worked for ESPN, which is also crazy cool. But he has worked as a journalist and a host and outlets for CNN, BBC, DirecTV, The Food Network, Speed Channel, Yahoo, and ABC. That is a lot. That sounds Cool. Like I want to meet this dude. Who is this guy? Because I, I don't remember feeling that cool back in the day. Did did did, did I do an okay job? No, you were spectacular. I've never Thanks. been like more nervous and self conscious about in, like introducing somebody. Why is that? Because you're that's what you're you, that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I I mean I, the way I feel about it is it's just what you do. You know yeah. I don't. Yeah, but you're you're like you should reintroduce if you were introducing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the intro? I think for I us? think you did a. I think you did a. Uh, welcome with sto- welcome to Stories with Soul with uh, me. I was yeah. I, <laughs> with me. Well, I I'm, I practiced a few times because like I got to bring my the mirror. I got to bring my A game because yeah. yeah. Mark is here. I found it. It helps if you have a shot beforehand just to kind of loosen it all up. Do you do just, that? Really? No, do you, uh, uh, no. Although uh, I I think there are certain broadcasting environments where it's it's a little bit okay. Like the Golden Globes, for example, they hand out champagne on the carpet to everyone walking in. Oh, intentionally. That feels loose. That feels like that's appropriate uh, yeah. where you are. It's glamorous. You're in a tuxedo, whatever. But I mean, not not before the morning news at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's laughs> a, a shot of espresso. A, a shot of espresso. That's, 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 but you're, right dude, your, your voice is so good. I mean, even just hearing you talk right now, I'm like, he's so... So so re- recently, you you hosted a... You were the host, I think is what it's called, for, at, at an event for the net. My, my yeah. Wife, like you, MC or whatever. MC, yeah. You, yeah. you emceed it. Uh, Jimmy and I, you, you mm-hmm. said it. That was there. Table together, and yeah. we both were like, "He is so freaking good!" Oh wow! Thank <laughs> as, you. as the MC, but it was the voice. It, it was, was like, so "How do you get a voice like that?" So oh, that's good. Uh, well, one, thank you for saying that. Yeah. I still feel like that guy who, when he hears his voicemail, thinks, "Oh, my voice sounds terrible." Do you really? I think, so. although in this business, you get so used to seeing yourself and hearing yourself, yeah. you kind of have to build a callus to that—that uh-huh. that self-critique where. You get, I don't know that you ever completely get over it, but you do get better assessing when you're okay and when you're terrible. Yeah. And I, I imagine it's not dissimilar for you when you listen to your music or you watch a show back and you, over time, you, you know what? 
we did okay there. Yeah. You know what? That was terrible. Yeah, yeah. You know when it's terrible, but you're awesome. Like I, 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 I can hang. I, I know when it's good. But, but so did you? Okay. One, your job is kind of crazy. Like it's, it's not a normal job. I don't really have any. I know very few people who are like I am on TV professionally for like it, it, one. It's really cool, and you've been doing it for a long time. Have like I just all the stuff I've read is is pretty bonkers. But so. Fort Worth guy. You went, yeah. to, you went to Southwest High School. Born and raised in Fort Worth, like Southwest High School. How did you, did you always want to be on TV? Were you always really good at speaking? No, I, I was Wins always... Speech club. I mean, it's weird because I think my career has kind of been this dovetail of all these different interests, um, okay. all these very disparate interests over the course of my life. But as a kid... I was always cool with public speaking. I always enjoyed that. I was a voracious reader. Are you I, are you the firstborn? Yeah. Okay. So you're like you've always kind of been the oldest kid. Yeah, yeah, the oldest kid. For better or worse. You were a reader. So some psychology into that. Yeah, I was a reader. And but my dream was to be a doctor. I wanted to be go to medical school the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. um, but I would take public speaking classes and I would read books and new i mean we had for like a, fun or yeah you like had time to. magazine we had a subscription when i was a kid and i would read time magazine as a you know eight or nine year old but you took why did you take public speaking class well like in, in school that was, okay, an elective. Okay. that was an elective yeah or like in high school uh and were you really good at it I think, did I was, you win was, all the debates uh i think i won i may have won district my senior year which is not okay. that big of a deal but it was extemporaneous speaking and having to mm -hmm. think on your feet and some of that kind of stuff i always that was fun there's a rush mm -hmm. that comes from that and I enjoyed uh, making videos. I would m make movies for class projects. And so I, I really always loved audiovisual stuff, visual okay. storytelling. But it never clicked for me that that would be a career. And it was just I fun. It was and, just it was a hobby, something I was really passionate about. And it's about. like a VHS, like you had you had Oh like yeah, a, I would hook up VCRs and you know, we would And would you edit them too? Like I, Yeah, I'd, I'd kind of play record pause kind uh -huh. of thing and you'd hook up the other one, press play, <laughs> right. press pause on you know, really rigged with the cables and everything. This, so, and this is high school? Anybody under the age of like thirty, I like, think what? is gonna be like, What in the heck is Why this? Why don't you just edit about? it on your iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. Stop and pause a VCR, what is this thing? But I remember like the big old, like kind of the big Oh yeah, I mean not yeah. not I mean just just kind of like how you used to have to press pause and record to record stuff off the radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, dude, I did that as a tape. kid. I yeah. record the edge. Totally. I would like, I would yes. sit and wait for my song. The mixtapes, dude. The mixtapes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I wanted to be a doctor, and that was like my dream. And I went to TCU and was a biology major on the pre med track, and it was more difficult than my study skills were prepared for. <laughs> And I've told the story a bunch. Some student, prospective student, came in that I was helping give tours to. And mm -hmm. the news anchor in her hometown was a TCU graduate. Okay. And it was like a light bulb went off. I thought, it never occurred to me to go to college for that. So you're like a fre sophomore? A freshman, yeah. Oh, you're a freshman? Yeah. But you're giving a tour? I, I think so. Or maybe I was meeting some students or something like that. And I don't remember specifically. Like, I'm here because someone, my news anchor. Was oh, there. yeah, the news anchor and wherever she was from. And you were like, that that could be a career. And it was just like a light bulb went off and I just knew. And I, it was such a combination of all of these different things that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm. News. Uh, the presentation aspect, the visual storytelling opportunities that come with craft, uh, crafting a news story, creating mm -hmm. a story, delivering it to an audience. It was all of these things together, and it was uh, just totally changed the course of my life, that one moment. I mean, if, if that girl hadn't been in that room and made that comment about so you like be you, a failed medical student right now? Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paying off medical bits for a degree I never earned. He's a really well-spoken doctor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> man, I, he doesn't know much about it, but man, he he sounds great. Yeah, he sounds really. Good. Uh, so, but you did you like go home and you're like, I need to switch what I'm doing? That's or? a good question. I think what I did originally was I thought I would double major, and. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's try this thing out, and at the end of four years, I'll make a decision. And if I remember correctly, this was before my sophomore year, so I took my first bro uh, broadcasting class, communications class, and it was it, I don't want to say it was easy; it just came naturally. I mm -hmm. got it; it clicked. And I think I had organic chemistry or some <laughs> pre med class that yeah. semester that did not did not click did not click, and it was obvious like. 
mm, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. This is this is an easy choice. It, it wasn't a choice. It was never like that. You make a pro con list. You just I just knew this is the path I'm supposed to take. Did you tell Did you tell people, like uh, your family? Were like oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, and my parents will say that they knew that. They always knew. Because, were you always like route. charming? Like were you like? I don't know. I don't know. Charismatic and charming. I don't think so. No, I've always felt like. Did you learn nerd. that then? I don't know. I feel like I could still learn that. That's yeah, but like it, it was more so. Did they know because of like, like the love for news presentation, those types of things, or did they see like what do they see in you that they? That's you a know, great question. Like, I think they saw that I did not throw myself into science and medicine. Okay. The it way, was the passion. It was the passion. The passion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and I also think too. I would also credit my experience going to church camp in the summer in a lot of ways with facilitating some of those aspects of myself that I think became really necessary in this career pursuit. Wait, explain that. I'm lost on... Yeah, so <laughs> you go to high school, okay. and yeah. you know how hard high school is, middle school. Yeah, you know, yeah. Between yeah. bullying and, and just the angst of being a kid trying to make it. We're all, just in, we're all insecure. Yeah, we're I was all, young for yeah. my grade, so I always felt like a fish out of water in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. But you go to church camp, or at least I did, and the experience I had there was a place where you were welcome, where you were loved, where you were encouraged to be yourself. Mm. And a night and day experience from middle school and high school. So I think that... Which is a confidence booster. You like Absolutely. When you feel accepted, you're like... Exactly. There's confidence. When you're comes. surrounded by love and acceptance yeah. and, and, and that opportunity to thrive to be whoever you were meant to be. Mm -hmm. So I think that played a big role in uh, me wanting to take leadership positions in uh, the different church camps I went to, mm -hmm. which meant you're up on stage leading songs and all that kind of stuff. And that was always a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I think when I was a kid, I thought acting would be cool. I mean, I mean, like a little kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I took a drama class in high school and realized I am terrible at this. <laughs> Is he, are good. you not a good actor? No, I couldn't. I like I can't bluff when we uh -huh. play games. My wife gives me a hard time. You can't lie. I can't. I like I uh -huh. I, I can't do it. It's not yeah. good. So, uh, but I can but tell the news. But you can get up on stage and command. Yeah, if attention. it's a version of myself, that's that's a totally different thing. Okay. And Interesting. Uh, even I mean, maybe we'll talk about this in a bit. But even when I lived in Los Angeles, I would get cast as a news anchor, as a TV reporter. <laughs> All the time, because I, I, you, uh, you, 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 like, I went to your IMDb, which is kind of. Funny. Oh yeah, there's, it's a lot of random stuff on there. Because you are, wait, hold on, I wrote some of these down. So your fake persona is your like, <laughs> real persona. Yeah, that pret <laughs> pretend to be you. Yeah, oh, well, I can do that. Yeah, that's, that's great. Right. That's you, right. Because you were on. Wait, what, what? What shows were you on? Where you were like? Oh, cast? I mean, like uh, General Hospital. Uh, and Young you had and like a, a recurring character on General Hospital, right? Yeah, uh, they they had. <laughs> and that character was a news anchor. Yeah, well, it was a red carpet <laughs> host. A red carpet host for. KPRC Port Charlotte. Uh, uh, Donnie, did you? Uh, did you? Donnie uh, Sheldon. Donnie. Yeah, Donnie, Donnie Sheldon. Name. God, man. If yeah. I see you out, I'm gonna call you Donnie. 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 That's that's <laughs> good. That's real good. Uh, you could probably go find that out there if you. You run Young and Restless. YouTube's. Yeah, uh, Revenge. Uh, Revenge. I love that show. Yeah, a ton of different shows. I, mean, I was, I was really on Young and the Restless for uh, two episodes, I think. Playing not breaking acting. news, yeah. <laughs> buried the lead here. I also have an IMDb. Young Restless is on there. Oh my gosh! We they with the band play. We were like a background. Were you Jamie? Or yeah, did they give I, yeah. You a, a I wish I, I wish I was like Donnie or somebody, but we we share that. Drake Malco. <laughs> That's a great, Moody. That's a great name. Uh, so, dude, I loved Revenge. Were you on Revenge as a news anchor? Yeah, but literally just like the guy in the crowd, like you know, yelling questions at the. You know, why did you let the governor's office, blah, 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 you okay. know, whatever. Were they, you auditioning for this or they just, were you were doing the, you were on the yeah, news? Yeah, but I would book, I'd book like about half of the reporter auditions I would go in on. Okay. So anytime they were like, you had like an email notification or something, they're like, they need a reporter. Well, a lot of times what Sign happens is up. they call Dude. broadcast agents as opposed yeah. to acting agents. Okay. Mm, and yeah. you'll see, if you watch movies and stuff, sometimes you'll see recognizable reporters, national folks, or a lot of uh, anchors and reporters out of Los Angeles that okay. work for local stations there. Well, that's um, fun. That's a fun. Yeah. But the coolest gig that ever came out of that kind of thing yeah. was I randomly got called in to do uh, auditions for an Old Navy voiceover campaign. They wanted an entertainment news style voice mm -hmm. for this campaign they were doing that was it was like a tmc entertainment tonight kind of feel vibe uh -huh. and i was covering entertainment news at the time and so 
I went in and got that, and that was like— So you were the voice of Old Navy for, for a season. For like, yeah, however long that campaign ran. This episode of Stories with Soul is brought to you by 6th Ave Storytelling. At 6th Ave Storytelling, we know that stories aren't just for bedtime. They're powerful marketing tools, and we've seen what they can do. Want to see for yourself? Download our free PDF, The Storytelling Pathway, on our website, 6thAveStorytelling.com. It's everything your business needs to be successful. This is what I've used to grow my businesses and hundreds of others. It's a strategy that has led to number one albums, built large followings, and has helped generate millions of dollars in revenue, thousands of leads, and tons and tons of traffic. I've seen client after client reach their goals, which is why I'm crazy excited to share it with you today. I'm offering this for free because it's my personal mission to support small business owners and entrepreneurs no matter where they are at on their journey. Because small businesses are the heartbeat of a city and they really are what make it special. Sixth Avenue Storytelling has helped brands across the country grow their business using these exact steps. Head to sixthavestorytelling.com and download the storytelling pathway to get your step by step guide today. Stories with Soul is brought to you by Fort Worth Business Press. The Fort Worth Business Press has been instrumental for me as a business owner. They were actually the first publication to ever cover Sixth Avenue Homes and also Sixth Avenue Storytelling, which were huge, huge wins for our companies. I also have been following along for years. I've been a subscriber. It has allowed me to keep up to date with everything that is happening in the business community and see what other business owners are doing and just stay involved in all sort of the economic development of what is happening in Fort Fort Worth. If you are in any way involved in business, you should go subscribe and sign up for their publication, uh, sign up for their twice daily newsletter. And, and, and they're actually offering a storytelling discount right now. If you listen to the podcast, become an insider using the storytelling code storytelling 10, all one word, lowercase, to stay up to date with the people and companies and issues that matter most. Visit fortworthbusinesspress.com to sign up today. No. So yeah, it did was, you ever it was, see it or hear it? Oh, all the time. You did all the time. It was crazy. The like, weirdest thing for me with that was how many people would say, "Hey, was did I hear you on?" Oh, they recognized show? it. That to me was weird because friends from you know a long time ago, you wouldn't think they'd recognize your voice. But that's kind of. But that's kind of that that, was, re, that reinforces my question. Like, were you always charming and had this great, amazing magic he, voice? He had the voice. <laughs> it's, it's, I wouldn't have ever felt that way, but yeah. the old navy the folks voice. thought so. Uh -huh. Apparently, so yeah, that was a cool gig because you go in the booth, you knock it out. They would book sessions, like you know, all the time. Did you get the hookup on Old Navy? No, in fact, <laughs> Grant, you don't really need the I'm hookup. In, it's already like six dollars yeah. for. But I'm in Old Navy one time. You need the hookups. <laughs> trying to return some shorts, uh -huh. or pants, or whatever I'd bought. Yeah, and I didn't have the receipt, or they have to look it up on the credit card, or whatever. And one of the commercials comes over the no radio way. at Old Navy, the loudspeaker. <laughs> Did you say? Anything? I kind of wanted to be like. Can see that's can we that's the guy I, I'm I'm can we did you say did you say ever say anything no I'm not I'm oh, so they're like I don't really care you're not getting the return on this buddy <laughs> get back in line yeah Every, I've heard that one before yeah. every yeah, once in a while right. I'll be at like at, at home, it's generally at Home Depot okay. Green River one is very popular in, in Home Depots and a song will come on while I'm like, <laughs> and I'm always like looking around I'm like hey have you heard this song this is me and that's pretty cool come and on and they look I mean, at me and they're pretty... like huh yeah what. I've never heard this song. You should just carry a yeah. guitar with you. Yeah. <laughs> and just, uh, why is the guy in the toilet aisle <laughs> strumming along to that's the my song. Giro song? <laughs> okay, so we, we, okay, we, we, we way derailed and that's, jumped, that's our, that's our style. Jump timelines. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's head back to, uh, let's go back college. to TC. Wait, first of all, I read, uh, tell me if this is true or not. I don't, I don't understand how that this is possible, but it said that you were a, a sixth generation horn frog. Yeah. How is that possible? That's yeah. a lot of generations. It is. It is. Uh, it goes back to my great. Was great, he like the founding father at TCU? Actually, he 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 was. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, he was. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, give us another derail. You got to tell that story. <laughs> yeah. How, how's that work? Uh, yeah, my great 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 grandfather is or was Randolph Clark, uh, who along oh, from with like his, Clark Dorn, like yeah, like along with his brother Addison, founded TCU. 
No. <laughs> that's that's how you get to be do, sixth generation. Do if you're the founder, does like your whole family go is, like, for you're free in? for life? Uh, if that that's that the case, works? then I've got a big rebate check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your great great great. Wait, but how many three greats is great, it? Three greats. Three greats. Yeah. So it's like in the blood. It's in a pretty very, purple. Yeah. Wow. Although man. it's it's interesting because I grew up. It's ironically my parents <laughs> both met at TCU, but we were never. A TCU family, like you know, families that are. Yeah. I mean, they go to the games, they tailgate, they've got the banner in the front yard, all that kind the of license stuff. Like, plate. Yeah, all yeah. that. We were never that family. Yeah. Um, but there's some pride there. Like, yeah, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't wearing the shirts. It wasn't. You know, going to the events and all that kind of stuff. But it was the hometown team. Yeah. And so I was a fan of the football team. Did you Did you live in the Clark dormitory? No, I mean I really should have been. I mean that was oh, a yeah. missed opportunity. Oh, you had to, you yeah, absolutely. I should have been, should have been descended from Milton remember. Daniel. <laughs> Man, yeah. <laughs> golly, yeah. So six. So your dad went there. Your uh, my dad, yeah. My parents met in the bookstore, um, but the lineage is is through my mom. It's mm -hmm. her. Uh, so her grandmother, my great grandmother, who I got to know, she was mm -hmm. alive uh, during my childhood. She was uh, Randolph's granddaughter. Wow. Oh, that is cool. I was wondering if this was a true fact, and it is, and that's yeah. a really cool fact. Yeah. TCU royalty right here. Um, so you switched majors. Did you eventually drop biology? Yeah, like a bad habit. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and did RT, like, did RTVF, is that what it's called? RTVF? Yeah. Did, mm -hmm. that, did that have, was like being a on-air personality, was that even a thing? Not so much in that major. Uh, now there's a broadcast journalism major at TCU mm -hmm. and I think they have since uh, added a lot of, of different resources and classes for that kind of stuff, especially mm -hmm. with Bob Schieffer's involvement. Now the yeah. uh, school is named after him. Uh, but I, you had a choice, radio, TV, film or broadcast journalism. And the guidance I got was take the RTVF classes because you can minor in journalism and cover the journalism stuff, but the RTVF will give you the production background. So you know how to edit and think. Yeah, and, and, and I think in, uh, for a long time, that was how I helped make ends meet while I was trying to make a career in television. You you like had a side gig of shooting and editing and producing production. and all that and taught oh, myself, really? you know, how to edit on After Effects and when I lived in Los Angeles and I'm trying to string enough money together to pay rent, you know, mm -hmm. I was able to rely on that skill set a big part because one, I was a fan of, you know, shooting and editing, making movies as a yeah. kid, but also because of the, the major. So did you, yeah. so you gr graduate, like, how, wh where'd you go next? Like, how, how do you get a job? You know, I'm assuming you don't just graduate and, and get someone on camera. Someone yeah, hires I mean, you. I, I, there are people who do that because yeah. they have their ducks in a row, uh -huh. uh, much more so than I did. But I, when I was a student at TCU, I had gotten a job doing graphics for ESPN. They had come to town to broadcast a TCU game, and that's a just, cool gig. Is yeah, it just happened gig. really randomly. They needed some uh, volunteers from the RTVF department, and just happened to be working next to the guy who staffed that mm -hmm. position. And so I would travel to games and. While I'm doing this during my senior year and then graduating, I'm sending out my resume tape to all these TV stations all over. Just so you filmed yourself like... Yeah, and I had an internship at Channel 8 at WFA in Dallas. Oh, okay, that's cool. And Full circle the there, wow. Of, exactly. During the course of that internship, you will shoot some stand-ups and put some stories together as a means to have something to put onto your reel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your resume tape. So sent out countless... VHS tapes. You're literally like back, back in the day. <laughs> recording on a tape. Yeah, and you would like record one master and edit a reel, and then you'd have to go just dub it mm -hmm. to tapes and send them out. You have two VCRs, hope. I guess. Yeah, I mean, you, you, that's what you do. Yeah. And uh, so it took about a year for the first on-air paying television job. But you were doing graphic. graphic yeah, still. but that was freelance. So like I would go to a college football game in Kentucky, and they'd pay me 150 bucks. And I'm like, oh. Loaded, uh -huh. yeah. God, so so, <clears throat> you're you got that internship senior year, yeah, and then you are doing that freelance work. And I mean, are you on your own? Did you have to like move back home? Did you like? Yeah, well, kind of. Long story short, <laughs> my mom moved out, uh, moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, when I was uh, this summer between my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. So I moved back into our family home yeah. with roommates. And that was where we lived my senior year of college, me and some roommates in the house mm -hmm. I grew up in. Okay. Uh, and then after graduation, still was there. 
and then uh, before I moved. So yeah. So you had like a cheap, you're living with a bunch of dudes, yeah. cheap rent. Bunch of free, if, exactly. Anything, yeah. yeah. And so the freelance work and all that kind of stuff was enough to get by. I probably, and, I mean, that and credit cards. Yeah. Oh, really? Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember I had a Sitco credit card, you know, 7-Eleven and I would go, I would go get food from 7-Eleven and put on the Sitco credit card. I mean, it was, it didn't have two pennies to rub together. Wow. Man. Golly. So yeah. you're just hoping I'm just going to rack up some debt until I can but, but get the plan, some sort But the plan of, is I want to be on air. Like yeah, and that was— You took I, the leap of faith, I'm going to be on air. Yeah, and I think—you know, it's funny. I don't even think until now I've ever thought much about how that first year and just waiting and waiting was similar to my move to Los Angeles because— uh, moved to Los Angeles after a few years on air and almost had to start from scratch again. Because that's the big pond. Yeah, that's exactly. Like you're now a small fish in a big pond. Exactly. And had to fight and scratch and claw and again, live off credit cards and rack up debt. So how, so you got some, you eventually got a gig somewhere? Yeah, eventually... at the NBC affiliate in Denison, uh, about where, an hour and a half north of Dallas. Denison? It's right there on the <laughs> Texas-Oklahoma border, man. Yep. In the land of Texoma. Yep. Uh-huh. And... <clears throat> was really fortunate to land at a station where I got a chance to cover sports, cover news, was a... As like a 22-year-old? Yeah, yeah, 22. I think I probably turned... That's so young. I turned 20... I think I turned 23 my first week there. And you were on air. And also, I mean, I feel bad for people in those markets because you have a lot of punk (laughs) 22-year-olds delivering your news. Yeah, yeah. As though they have some... You know, worldly perspective on yeah. what's going on. They're talking about the politics and... <laughs> like, you just moved here, kid. You just moved out of your dorm. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But, uh, yeah, uh, and did that for a couple of years before moving to Los Angeles. And then and you said, I got to get out of here. It was less that. It was more I had a job interview for a job I didn't get on Jeopardy. And you ever watch Jeopardy and they've got oh, these yeah. roving correspondents that give clues from... Uh-huh. You know, we're in front of the... <clears throat> Tombs of Egypt, where such and such was the emperor, whatever. Yeah. They had this nationwide kind of casting call where you submit yourself on tape and then they called 500 people in and then they whittled that down to 100 and they whittled that down to 20 and they flew us out to Los Angeles. And I didn't get the job. Uh, but I thought, this sounds amazing. I want to do that. Was that your first time in Los Angeles? Yeah. Yeah. It, which is beautiful. I mean, it's so cool oh yeah and it was a dream to go experience it you know it's like june and someone flew you out there so you're you're feeling pretty good oh yeah i i thought it was i mean and i you get so hyped up you've already signed the contract with them in case you get the job Mm -hmm. and i'd seen what it paid and did you quit your other job no because this is all well it's it's, all yeah this is so it's like a an audition process they fly you out for this thing you find if you get it didn't get it and i thought that's where, that's where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But you want to get something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, and you know, everyone told me, you're not going to get that job in Sherman, yeah. in Denison. You've got to be there. And kind of the same way that I took a leap of faith to pursue TV in the first place or even pursue broadcasting. I never sat down and decided. I just knew. It felt in your gut. I'm supposed to be in California. Hmm. So before we move on to L.A., I yeah. want to ask... What is the, you, you, I know you have some disaster stories in Denison. Like oh. you, you have to, you're like, there's no way you started brand new at 23. No, of course. Is there, is there like a really good story where it's like, I was on air and I said this, or I just had a bad night and here's what, like, you know, I don't yeah, know. I mean, frankly, those moments happen now where <laughs> okay. you, okay. you, your teleprompter's broken and... That's the script, man. I don't, I don't, you know, we're not printing papers. We're not killing trees every day and printing out an entire yeah. show. That's where the script is. And, and do you review that before? Or yeah, you, but, uh, but the show I'm on now, it's sometimes? a live show, you know, two and a half hours. And so some of the stuff that we're talking about, we haven't written at 4.30 in the morning. The, you know, stuff at 6.45 may not be written. And uh-huh. so I'm a big, I'm really big on going over stuff and putting my fingerprints on it. Have you had it where you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say? Yeah, because over the course of a block. I don't remember what the seventh story is. Yeah. So what? what do you, can you give an example of that? I, I mean, usually you can get to where you need to get or uh-huh. you'll someone will throw you a lifeline. Uh-huh. Uh, but going back to those early days, I remember one time making a joke on air about we did the story on a big beehive. <laughs> they would take it over go. some lady's Ten, yard, right? Tennyson like 10,000 bees take over this lady's front yard. Uh, yes. And at the end of the story, I was like, huh, that's bizarre. Yeah. Bizarre. And uh, like, somebody, yes. one of the camera operators kind of snort laughed. Yeah. And then I lost it. 
You laughed. You started. And then die we laughing. can't. Well, none of us. We couldn't go on. We none of us could do it. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's probably tape of that song. Oh man. And but there were a lot of moments like that. I mean, you have a bunch of kids doing the news at that point uh-huh. in time, and we yeah. had an older uh, weather anchor who I'm sure was just beyond over it. Uh-huh. Yeah, shaking his head, yeah. just like God, you guys are idiots. Yeah, You're like yeah. But luckily, and I knock on wood when I say this, but luckily none of the you know f bombs on air or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. That's ooh, that's a well, I mean, that's nightmare. a nightmare. Yeah. You've never a, you've never done that. No, not that's a career yeah. killer. Yeah, I mean, that's that's right? tough stuff. Is that is I don't know. I mean, maybe not like it used to be, but. Yeah. There are still certain words that you're not going to come back from. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't, yeah. You can't. It's like in front of your kids. I'm, I'm, have you? Okay. Uh, in in Denison. This is sorry. I'm. We're going to go back to L. A. But yeah. did you ever yeah, yeah. get like sick or like where you're like getting queasy where you're about to just? I mean, I'm like I'm about to throw up. I'm about to burp. I'm about to you know. Gosh, not off the top of my head. I mean, okay. I. They're definitely. There's all kinds of moments where mics are up and you're not ready to be on and they take you early and all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Nothing was ever like just a career killer. Least, okay. So I blocked it out of my mind. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, we might need to ask uh, some of those coworkers. But I mean, between the coworker, there were certainly like <clears throat> at the end of any week, you could go back and I mean, put together a blooper reel. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. We can move on. So LA. Yeah. So you said I need to be here. Yeah. It's, 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 the first time you go to LA, it's, I mean, it's, it's like the garden of Eden is what I always say. It's so pretty and yeah and and the weather and Mm -hmm. it was just it was a vacation it was an adventure Mm -hmm. and all right i'm gonna move there now i gotta figure out how to do it so i got a job at a store on rodeo drive in beverly hills working retail while i landed a sports gig for the city of santa monica's cable channel doing sports every two weeks for their local Santa Monica cable news show. So that's not that's not paying very much. No, 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 no. And it was a lot of work because I've got to come up with the stories. I've got to find the shooter. We've got to edit the stories together. We've got to go drive to this other city where the studios are to anchor mm-hmm. the thing. And I mean it was just a way to just keep my foot in the door. Did you did so you I'm ha- still on TV but just barely? Did you have any savings or anything or you just No, I think I had 800 bucks. Okay. And you and t- a ton of credit card debt. And a ton of credit card debt. Oh, were yeah. your parents cool with it? Were they were they like They were unbelievably supportive for what in hindsight was a wild harebrained idea. Really? And That's cool. It's kind of one of those things where I would never tell anybody to take that leap of faith. Unless you have to take that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Do you you know what I mean? It's like, because there's so many reasons not to do it, um, unless you are willing to tough it out. Unless unless you're willing to do the grind. And I, and I, I don't, I don't know that I realized that I was, I think that that time trying to make it there, trying to make ends meet, get out of debt, have regular TV work. And you're accumulating more debt. Oh Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I mean, I look at that as that was my grad school. Uh huh. Okay. Someone else takes out a loan to pay for grad school. I'm swiping credit cards to. You're just paying 18. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> and you're paying it right away. Yeah, that's right. So I think that that experience, though, was what I needed to learn to continue to be there. And there was a turning point at some point in time where I thought I kept thinking, you know, what, when you say I, need, I needed to learn, what do you mean? I needed to learn it. Like I needed to learn how to stick it out. I needed to learn how to stand on my own two feet. Okay. You know, I'd grown up in Fort Worth. I went to college in Fort Worth. My You're, first job was an hour and a half away. Yeah. I, I was very, uh, I wouldn't say I lived a sheltered life, but I had not ventured out. Yeah. And in fact, I had never wanted to leave Texas and Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. So leaving ended up being the best decision I could have made in terms of having to learn how the world works. Because you're so on your own. Self-sufficiency. Own. Yeah. And, you know, 1,500 miles or however, however far away from home, it was a, just such a, a needed lesson. So were you applying for things? Were you still, like, sending yeah. out reels? Yeah, you- and, and still editing new reels together, and anything comes up, I'm submitting. And you're just you're just trying to kind of piece it all together because you can't get access to some of the job openings until you have an agent. You can't get an agent until you've had enough jobs. Mm-hmm. Chicken or the egg. Ex- exactly. And, and you're, like – Everyone in LA is doing the same thing. They're like working retail or working at a restaurant. And they're they want to be a, a model or an actress yes. or a you know people. And, are, people are doing what you're doing. You got a lot of competition. And that was my saving grace was that I wasn't trying to be an actor. Yeah. Um, but there were a lot of actors trying to do what I did. Okay. So I felt like, okay, what do I have to differentiate myself? Because I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not the the guy who looks like a model. I'm not the dude with the six pack. I'm not the mm-hmm. guy with the pipes. I'm not all these things. But I 
can write and tell a story. I know how to shoot and edit. Okay, so how do I use that to my advantage mm -hmm. to compete for jobs that other people couldn't compete for? Yeah. So it was grind, man. It was really, for how really many years? hard. Let's see. I got there in, in 2001, and I was able to quit the retail job in 2004 to be full-time TV, but even then I'm wow, still so together. Three, yeah, but a three three years of working, re that's, I mean, that's kind of a... It was, it was rough. I hated yeah. it. Um, despite being really grateful for it. Uh -huh. I'm sure you were actually really good at it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can I imagine you being good at something. Welcome like, to the store at the six ninety nine. <laughs> but I had I had, you know, I'd got my college degree. I had worked up yeah. uh, you know, my way up the ladder of this news station and it's a humbling, I'm asking people a humbling if, scenario. If, who people on the on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills no less, people who can't deign to get off their cell phone to tell you that they want to try that on yeah. in a small. Um mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that kind of work, but when someone treats you the way a lot of the customers did it's the meaning yeah so i i feel for folks who are in any kind of industry but you stuck it out because i didn't have a choice man uh -huh. i mean it was that and i because refused. you because you were like i'm not going back home. i'm not going to go home with yeah them. and i think in my head i kept thinking well if worse comes to worse i will yeah. and then at some point i just thought you know what i've got to be I, if i go home i'm going to try to do the same things i'm doing here mm -hmm. trying to do here so why not just be all in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's just kind of a little bit of a mind shift uh, change, I think that happens when you take that approach, when you're all in. Yeah. So every guest we've had on here, you know, it's, it's some, it's either a business owner or some sort of person that's like, has, has made it, so to speak, you know, or like has some sort of, I would say a successful career for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Everyone we've had on has built a neat brand of some sort. Yeah. And, ha and has a cool story to go along with it. But, it, and we didn't mean for this to happen. It wasn't like scripted. It's just every single person we, and, and we pause in the show every time and, and unintentionally at first and now intentionally to talk about the grind period and everybody has it. And so most people, and we, we've had chefs, we've had, you know, business owners, we've had just, you know, all these different types of industries, but it's always this, a similar story, especially with the grind period where it is, it, there's a lot of people that have a lot of good skill set. Like they have the qualities, like you had the voice, you had the storytelling ability, you had the editing ability, you had these things that could set you apart, but that's, that alone is not going to get you there. And there's always this grind period it's and of sacrificing and, and, and it's, it's humbling. It's like having to just be like, you know, just take it and I'm going to take it on and I'm going to keep on taking it on until I find and create that opportunity where this is, this is it. Like I've already taken the leap. Now I have to grind and success is coming. I just, I don't know where it's at right now, but I know it's here and I'm waiting and watching for it. And I think that, uh, one commonality is we've never seen a grind period. Like it's, it's always years. It's never like, it was it's, two it's months. Like, yeah, man, I grinded it out for like three or four months and it was so tough. It's not grinding. It, yeah. it is not. <laughs> and it's winter. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's winter. That's exactly right. It's always in years. And that's been the common theme. Like one, one, one person, one guest was like, it's, yeah, that was about 10 years. And everybody talks it in the story. Like it's this two second thing where it's like 10 years of just Busting, you know, like just working as hard as you can. Man, you are a hundred percent right. Yeah. At least that's been my experience, and I yeah. think of most people. I, obviously, there are those guys out there who win the lottery. Yeah, you sure. Know, related to somebody famous or whatever. I mean, but those are anecdotal stories that you can't aspire to. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's right. Uh, I think one, the grind was real and necessary, and I still feel like I wish I could go back and do that part again smarter because again yeah. you, you learn how to do it well, while you're well, doing well, it well, how would you do it i think i would have been more disciplined i think i waste a lot of time sitting on the couch you know waiting for someone to call kind of and, and you just don't realize like time is the is this commodity that you will never get back yeah and you never have enough of and so i wish that they're looking back but i think i also had to go through that time period to learn some lessons so were you getting better like at your craft i hope so yeah and some of it was just seasoning, maturity, and realizing that the things you want when you're 25, you're not really ready for till you're 30. That's and, really good. Yeah, but the grind part's real. So I think the lesson that I most learned is that stick to itiveness is the most important trait. The cream does not always rise to the top. There are so many talented guys and girls that I knew that I worked alongside that never really quote unquote made it yep. because they bolted. Because they're like, yeah. after a year and a half, they're like, this is too hard. I'm out of here. And that's in 
the broadcasting, the local news world, in the hosting world, the TV world. I had you know actor and actress friends that I think were super talented and, and could have had really long, productive careers who were like, eh, this isn't for me. It's not. Yeah. It's not for you. If you can't stick it out, then that's then go do something else. Because their expectation of the grind period was six months, a year, two years even. You know, it's like, but you're... Are you uh, willing to do what yeah. it takes? I mean, you can look at a million things. You know, <laughs> guys that, uh, people that are in amazing shape. Yeah. Well, if you want to look like that, it takes... 10 plus years. Yeah, yeah you don't work. wake takes, up that way. Yeah. You don't so, just like, oh, here. That was just a really, really valuable lesson for me. And, and I think it's one that I am still learning. Mm-hmm. Frankly, yeah, sure. I hope, yeah, that's right. How did you just smarter now? How did, actually can older? I, can I? One other thing that's interesting, just it, uh, also to correlate some of the other guests that we've had on, mm-hmm. is almost everyone has had a pretty supportive family mm-hmm. and pretty support. Like we really haven't had anybody that was like my parents said you like. Almost everyone's like had had parents that were pretty supportive, yeah. which I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about. You, you said that they allowed you to go do that. They, they, they didn't, they didn't like here, let me pay, you know, pay for it. No. I mean, they, they helped to the degree that they were able to, but they were encouraging. Yes. Like and my, I don't know that I could have done it emotionally without that support, without knowing that they were behind me. But like my parents cut me off when I said, I'm dropping out of school to go play music, but they were so supportive you know, tricky, isn't it? it but I, I it, the fact that coming off was great. It, it taught me to be super, super poor. Um, but but they're encouraged. But I, but I think about having kids now. Like the mm-hmm. biggest thing I want to give my kids is a confidence to chase their dreams. You know. But I just hearing you hearing you say that after hearing guest after guest say the say a similar yep. thing that I had parents who encouraged me to go do it. I almost feel like it's <clears throat> it's either that or it's got to be one eighty. Uh-huh. They were so the underdog. discouraging that you have <laughs> chip on your shoulder. Your, your goal, yeah. I am going to prove mom or dad wrong. Yeah. And yeah. that is your North Star. Yeah. But I, I don't know that there's an in between. <laughs> He's not yeah. for most people. I don't think so. Because, I mean, it, it, and as a parent now, I'm like, I'm hearing the stories of what, you know, some of the guests are, are saying. I'm like, man, as a parent, I'd be like, what the heck are you doing, man? Like, that would be hard to stay supportive for that many years. Yeah. Know? And it's tough because I also think. And this is tricky too, but as parents, you want the best for your kids. Yeah. But it's, I think, pretty hard to determine what is the best. Yeah. yeah. Is getting into Harvard the best thing? For, it might not be for your kid. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe your kid needs to go a different route and figure out a different path and blaze his own trail or her own trail. Mm-hmm. And I think every generation wants something better for their kids than they had. Mm-hmm. Although maybe we are hamstringing our kids by trying to ensure that as opposed to letting them earn it, figure it out. Yeah, that's right. On their own. But letting, but the fact that they were like, we're going to let you go to LA and do this TV. My dad, my dad packed up the car and moved me out. I mean, like (sighs) he drove me and uh, he likes to tell the story that as he is getting back in the car to drive back to Texas, just tears streaming on his face. Mm -hmm. Hardest thing he's ever done. He likes to say, Mm. and I mean, as a parent, I get that, Yeah. but he did it. Yeah. And I'm eternally grateful um, to both my folks because they were very, very and always were supportive about mm-hmm. we'll figure out a way to help you do what you want to do yeah that's even amazing. if we don't agree with it yeah okay so what happened what was the what was the moment where yeah. you said oh my gosh dude this is it's paying off two big turning points um one was the city of santa monica's cable channel that i was doing that one show for Did launched like- uh, kind of like a fun little out and, about, out and about town kind of show where we highlighted local restaurants and fun stuff to do in Santa Monica. And that was going to be a weekly show and it was going to pay enough for me to quit the retail gig. Oh, cool. Probably not really, but I couldn't really do both. Yeah. And I'm like, I was so done. So that was where, I, okay, I'm full-time TV. Finally, this is a big milestone. Now you're a professional in California. Yeah. So this yeah. is like 04, I Confidence guess. booster. Three years, yeah. It was a big, big, big move. Um, but then it's still like trying to find the gigs that were sustainable the jobs that, okay, I have a job, mm-hmm. not I'm stringing together a bunch of freelance jobs and hoping that the check comes in the mail in time for me to pay my rent, mm-hmm. which happened so many times. You know, I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent this month. Did you have roommates? I had a roommate, yeah. Were roommates or roommate, were they also in he the was industry? In, uh, the roommate I was lived with for the longest time worked for a film company, okay. um, you know, movie uh, production company. Uh, so that was the first key was that Santa Monica job. And 
randomly, I just kind of started adding stuff to it. I did some stuff for the city of Los Angeles's cable channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a job hosting a show that was nationally syndicated, uh, profiling people doing good work in their community. So I'm just kind of adding these things to the resume. And, mm-hmm. you know, none of, them, none of them were big enough, but they were, you know, bigger stepping stones. Uh, randomly uh, ran into someone at a restaurant when I was in New York that was the head of the Food Network. And I ended up hosting a show for the Food Network. Because and, you met him in a restaurant? Well, we had he. I'd been on the radar. He was like, his voice is so good. I, well, I'd been on the radar, <laughs> and I think he ran into me, and it was kind of like, oh, hey, that, let, let's do Mark for this uh, this XYZ show, thinking I live there. I didn't. Oh. So they hired did you know, the show. Did you know who he was? Yeah, my, I was having lunch with my. It's this very like L.A. New York kind of story. Yeah. I was having lunch with my agents while I was in New York for something. Yeah. We see the guy there. They say hi at the table. He remembers me for the show. Yeah. Thinks I live in, live in New York. They say, okay, let's do this. Find out I. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, now we've already signed the contract. <laughs> we've got to get him out there. So I do that show. When I'm promoting that show, we did a segment on the TV Guide channel, okay, TV Guide Network, and that led to me working for the TV Guide Network for a number of years in entertainment news. All right, guys, we're interrupting your podcast experience once again. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But we are giving you something for free. So it's totally worth it. Yeah. We recently released a document called The Storytelling Pathway on our website. It is our playbook for success for growing brands for marketing mm-hmm. that, that that's every literally everything that we do at sixth avenue storytelling and we want to share it with the world we want to give it to you so in addition to these nuggets that you're learning on this podcast you can get our free playbook free manual for how you grow your business from sixth avenue sixth storytelling. storytelling yeah it's that's the storytelling right. and it's really really good it's where do you find it at sixth avenue storytelling.com there you go and it's good go get it go download it i promise it's going to help your business And so you pop them back and forth to New York to LA. Well, that with the Food Network show was just like a one-time okay. deal, a one-time mm-hmm. thing. But I guess my point is, it was it was leapfrogging from one thing to another, and they all kind of connected. You know, you meet a person here that goes to work there, they hire you. You meet someone yeah. else. They You're get building your network. Yeah, and that ultimately is how I landed at NFL Network. Is the guy that I worked for at TV Guide Network worked for the NFL Network? Knew I was a football fan. Gave me an opportunity there. I mean, I'm skipping a lot of steps, but it was. But what's interesting is, is there's a. Have you ever, have you ever heard the phrase? I can't remember who said it, but but who luck? Like like so much of of your luck is like the people that you meet and know. Yeah, or luck is what is it where preparation and opportunity meet? Yeah, yeah. you know. You, That's right. Or it takes ten years to be an overnight mm-hmm. sensation. Like oh, I think yeah. all that kind of. But you're building, dovetails. meeting these people and these connections and. Yeah. And then you are, and that's again is where the stick to itiveness becomes so important is because, well, you may not be right for this opportunity, but the next one you could be. But if you're out of here, you missed it. Yeah. You know, you're, you're playing musical chairs out here. And yeah. at some point, your number will get called or whatever, hopefully. And so you wound up on it, the NFL network. Yeah. And were, are you a sports guy? Like, hey, you- I mean, I, that when I, at the beginning, when we talked about wanting to be a broadcaster, the goal at the time was to be. On ESPN on Sports Center. That was that was your dream. I thought that would be the most amazing thing. And then I went and was a weekend sports guy, and I was like, no, nah, it's not the dream anymore. I don't. Yeah. Know. It's not what I want to do. A- after you did it, yeah. After I kind of did it on the local level, I realized, oh, I love sports, not in the way where I want to talk about a, a Clippers Pistons game on a Tuesday night in okay. February. <laughs> but how long were you on the NFL? I was there for five years. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. That was the so you became the sports like a sports guy. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's always a football fan, and that yeah. was a very different experience. I mean, you're working for the NFL, okay. you're working for the league, yeah. so you're hanging out with the players, and you're going to the Super Bowl and doing all this cool stuff was that with your, the league's was, backing. Yeah, what was your role there though, like, as far as like, uh, yeah, a few different roles. Uh, mm-hmm. They launched a digital streaming service called NFL Now, so I was a host for NFL Now for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Then we had a show that streamed on Twitter which I hosted all the while doing some Sunday shows too. And then my final year there, I hosted uh, Fantasy Live, which was their fantasy football show. And then Game Day Live, which is our game day highlights show, which airs while the games are airing. And you're just ripping highlights off the games, kind of like Red Zone, if you've ever seen yep. Red Zone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so you're meeting all these NFL players. It was, and man, it was a dream. Was it fun? And it, it was. And I think it's one of those things too. So you do these jobs incrementally and you have these experiences and so when you meet someone amazing that's 
a little more amazing than the person you just met, it doesn't, you, you kind of maybe sometimes need to get the 10,000. <laughs> Incrementally yeah. more amazing. Yeah, to, to go back and say <clears throat> that to 18 year old me, who was a huge Cowboys fan. Yeah. Hey, you're going to, you're going to work with Michael Irvin someday. Uh -huh. That would have been incredible. Yeah. yeah. So I, I am very aware of how cool some of those opportunities were professionally at, at the network and beyond um, yeah. to have covered uh, people that I was a fan of their work from an acting or actor, actress perspective or sports perspective or just in the public sphere. And then you did ESPN. Yeah, the ESPN thing was just the graphics right out of school. Okay, it was just okay, okay. So you you didn't go. So you the, after NFL you were like, all right. I'm, after NFL, I ended up here. Oh, after NFL, you you wound up yeah in back in Texas. Yeah. So you you, you your five years in LA, you were doing all the NFL. So you know. I was I was in LA from 01 till uh, 2019. So about 18 years. Oh, 18 years. Yeah. Yeah, because so we got a we got a grind period there of how 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 long grind was, grind? was 01 to 04 yeah and 1, then 04. 04 to 07 was when I landed at TV Guide Network I was yeah. at TV Guide Network till I think like 2010 2011 um, after that did a whole bunch of freelance stuff that's where you mentioned the BBC CNN mm -hmm. ABC.com I hosted just a bunch of random stuff um, ton of shows and it was 2013 that I started working for NFL Network okay so. Peel back the curtain a little bit. I, I, I feel like most people, whenever they see, like, and, and this is this is something that I, you know, have learned over the years, but I feel like when most people, they see people on, on TV, they're like, oh, that's just their job. Like, you get, like, you're the anchor for a, ho or you're a host of a show, and, like, whenever you're watching TV, you don't realize that they might be there, and but then, you know, next month they're gone. Like, I mean, it's just, There's so. Not a lot of, of career um, security. Exactly. And I, and I think people like, you know, you see pe people that on TV regularly, but they're on different shows or they're hosting different things. Now they're on a game show. Now they're on a mm -hmm. news network. Now they're on this. Michael Strahan's example of that. It's like, what the heck is a football player now doing on Good Morning America? You know, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, try, like peel back the curtain a little bit mm -hmm. uh, about like how that works. Like whenever you're, you're like, I did some stuff for this. I did some freelance work. They're just grabbing you for a show, a series, uh, like how does that work usually? It depends. Um, yeah. It depends on the entity. It depends on the person. So at NFL Network, Rich Eisen was there uh, as their main guy from the time they launched, and he's been there the entire time. He yeah. also does other stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's got a, a like a podcast kind of show on DirecTV interview show. And um, I, I would say a lot of people are doing, unless you were a, a news person for a news station, which there's some blurry lines there between, you know, those roles and a host role or an analyst role. Those people are usually uh, someone like Rich. He's got a deal there, but it's not exclusive. So sure. he can go do other things so long as they don't compete with what he's doing sure. for NFL Network. But most of the time, like, I mean, so like say whenever you did stuff for like the BBC, mm -hmm. you know, it's like when they say they call your agent, right? Is that how it works? I mean, they would not in that situation. No, but it typically, yeah, you're, yeah. they're looking for, so people. you got, you had an agent now at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that situation, I had worked with somebody who knew a producer at the BBC that was looking for someone to cover some tech news for them in Hollywood. And like, so, what does that job look like? Like, what does that so look like? So like, let's see, uh, when Microsoft announced a new Xbox, flew up to Seattle to cover the launch of an Xbox and took a camera and shot it and interviewed people and edited it. And turned you it brought in. your own camera? Uh, I think in that one I did. Yeah. Because because you also have this unique skill set where you can film and edit and make a whole, you could, you're like a one, one man show. Yeah. So which not a lot of people can do. Yeah. So I think we did, we did uh, a story about that. We did a story about a um, Fisker, which is a hybrid electric car back in mm -hmm. the day. And we went out to their headquarters. We drove the car around and, you know, explained the technology behind it. So again, it's a tech show. So you're discovering anything tech related, uh, but they needed somebody in Los Angeles. They're in London. They didn't have anybody here to do that kind of work. And so, yeah, we'll hire you freelance to, do the show for a day rate or for a story rate or whatever. And what's, that's it. What's the yeah. most random thing you've covered? Oh, geez. Um, I would say the Monte Carlo TV Festival, which I covered for TV Guide three years, uh, for three years. And that was, I mean, you're in Monte Carlo <laughs> doing interviews overlooking the Mediterranean. <laughs> -uh. They're taking down the F1 track from the race a couple wow. weeks ago. Oh the prince gosh. is just hanging out. You know, it's really? like, 
<laughs> that was pretty crazy. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So we, in, in, uh, did you ever, so I'm, you've met a lot of people, all these NFL st stars yeah. and, and, and in LA, you, there's, you're like one separation from all sorts of, did you ever have anybody that you like geeked out on or starstruck or any, oh, any cool, any cool, like I met, got to t meet this person or I, a lot. Well, one doing entertainment news between red carpets, movie junkets, award shows. Yeah, you've done all you've done a lot of red carpets. Yeah, a lot of red carpets. Do you become uh, friends with people like Yeah, well, you you'll see somebody you'll, you'll you'll see the same person over and over again and you'll build up a rapport with them ho hopefully. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh or maybe you are in a friend group with somebody. Yeah. It just depends. Uh, but the the number of random encounters uh I, I feel like it's kind of a Forrest Gump experience for me and just the 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 jobs I've bounced between and the people I've gotten to run into. Uh -huh. um, you know, one of the most bizarre encounters for me in hindsight is I'm, <laughs> I'll give you the whole setup here. I feel like this is going to be good. Flown on an airplane one time, coming from Los Angeles to North Texas somewhere, mm -hmm. and Mandy Moore was on the plane. Okay. This is like way back in like, you know, like what, what was, there was the movie, four. the big, uh, <laughs> that the Switchfoot song was on, uh, Walk to Remember. Yes. This is like yeah, the Walk to go. Remember. And so I remember. This is 0304, so I, you're like, you yeah. know, your highest accolade is Denison, you know. Yeah, exactly. Right now. <laughs> and I had seen her on this airplane and I remember saying to myself, if I ever see her again, I'm going to ask her out. Nah. And this okay. is, by the way, I'm not that guy. Okay. Yeah. I am. I was never the guy who could go up to someone in a bar yeah. and introduce my, you know, yeah. can I have your number? That was always, yeah. So I'm walking in the, on the street in Beverly Hills one time, going right. to get a Subway sandwich, I think, or something. <laughs> and she comes out of the hair salon. And I'm kind of like, well, I, I said I'd ask her out. I guess I kind of have to. Like, I love I'm, that I'm you, the biggest host <laughs> in the world. You uh, <laughs> honored that. So... I just, I'm trying to remember exactly how it went down. I think I walked up. Did to you him. have a Subway sandwich? In no, he, probably. He, I he probably bought had. Subway sandwich on credit card. <laughs> yeah. and, and he's walking out and he says, you know, now's the time to ask Mandy more. Yeah. And uh, I think I said to her, what would I have to do to convince you to have a cup of coffee with me? No. I think that ballsy was Ballsy move. I love yeah. it. And she, to her credit, uh, she said, oh my gosh, you just made my day. I'd love to, but I'm, I'm seeing somebody. Uh-huh. And I thought, what a great response, even if she made it up. Classy. Yeah. Yeah. Classy yeah. move. And I think I was, you know, thank you very much. Hope you have a nice day. You know, good for you. Good luck to you too, whatever. Golly, that was so, nice. And I remember, so I mean, funny. I was probably shaking. And again, this was the most <laughs> out of character uh -huh. thing. But I remember thinking, I can't believe I just asked out Mandy Moore. <laughs> That's it. a story for life add, right there. That yeah. And um, so then she goes on to have this this big career. And, yeah. Uh, uh, my, you know, my first, I can't believe I skipped over this, my first real celebrity encounter. You know, I told you I read Time Magazine as a kid as a news yeah. junkie. So when I was in high school, I volunteered to write for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram's teen section of their newspaper, Class Acts. They had this little section devoted to teens like once okay. a week. I'm assuming they don't have that anymore. No. But they had a bunch of teenagers that uh -huh. were, you know, correspondents. And so I got sent to the National Cutting Horse Show to interview Johnny Rutherford, race car driver, Okay, who didn't show up because he was sick. Okay. But the guy who did show up there to support his then wife, Christy Brinkley, was Billy Joel. What? <laughs> Billy Joel's there. There's nobody. They're just doing a rehearsal, right? Billy Joel's hanging out in the stands. His wife's riding a cutting horse around the arena in Fort Worth. Billy Joel was in Fort Worth at a cutting horse event. Exactly. <laughs> and I guess they're like, well, let's go see if Billy Joel will give us an interview. As a high school kid? I'm 14. <laughs> that is hysterical. So we go up to Billy Joel and, excuse hey, me, Mr. Joel, Joel, would you give our teen correspondent an interview and he was gracious enough to do so and he couldn't have been cooler and my really? questions were like where do you see yourself in 10 years What's your favorite color yeah it really was <laughs> like how do you think you'll be different in 10 years i mean it was this just really 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 terrible um but he was kind and gracious and in fact another reporter came up and tried to get in on it and he like shoot shoot the guy away so like, oh that's cool talking to this kid here can you yeah. what a cool first interview it was pretty rad are and you a billy joel fan I mean, yeah, I have to uh -huh. be after that, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Down Easter Alexa all day. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I, my, I, somehow, some way, I need to get a note to him or cross paths again and be like, you have no idea what how that meant. your kindness affected this 14 year old kid. That's cool. All these years ago. That's really neat. Yeah. 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 Have you ever had anybody that you like got really nervous? You're like, I can't believe I'm talking to this person. Yeah, probably. I mean, I think less so with time, uh -huh. but. 
anytime you meet someone that you put on a pedestal that you think is, a, you're like, I'm a, I'm a fanboy. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like, uh, I interviewed Simon Cowell one time. I was nervous about that. Oh, I, really? He's going to criticize you. you uh-huh. know, whatever. Um, yeah. I think interviewed Will Ferrell a few times. The first time was probably pretty nervous. Not so much after. Oh <laughs> man. I would be yeah. so nervous. Uh, are you an Anchorman fan? Oh yeah, you. I mean, doing your. <laughs> you have to be. <laughs> you have to tee this up to ask yeah. about Classy San Diego. Get, ask, ask it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, at some point, it gets to be where you're doing enough of them, they're doing enough of yeah. them, where hopefully that evens out the peaks and valleys between mm-hmm. those moments of, of nervousness. Yeah. Have you ever bought like been really awkward or botched? <laughs> I made a joke. I think I made a joke one time. Uh, do you remember? What is her name? Uh, she was on Saved by the Bell, Elizabeth. Kelly uh, Kapowski. I don't know the name. The tall, I don't know the, the actual tall, tall redhead, um, uh-huh. and I'm forgetting her name. A.C. Slater's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm totally blanking. <laughs> They're but, actual people. We just, are, <laughs> <we're> just <laughs> We were at this uh, press event uh-huh. to push a bunch of NBC shows. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's like oh, at a resort. And I made some joke about we should be doing these interviews in the hot tub. Because it was a really nice, swanky place. And I was yeah. like, oh, that'd be kind of funny yeah. if all the interviews were in a hot tub. Except I think the way it came it out came it was, out was like creepy. <laughs> yeah, like, you and I should be doing these interviews in the hot tub. <laughs> oh, which was not my intent at all. And uh, she responded kind of like, mm, not not so much. And it, I really missed Now it. you feel yeah. like a jerk. Yeah, and I'm kind of like, no, 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 I'm not that guy. I don't. Uh, uh. I just asked Manny where I at one time. That yeah. was it. <laughs> So uh, certainly there are plenty of those kinds of moments where what you think is a funny shtick on camera doesn't really play that well. Yeah. And you're in the moment, you're trying your best and sink or swim sometimes. You have you have you ever pissed someone off? Like, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, a lot of times uh, producers will come up with questions that you're asking and you've got maybe four minutes to talk to somebody and you're trying to get 20 things mm-hmm. yeah. discussed. Uh, I, you know, they always love drama what's the, what's the drama like dish on your star your fellow mm-hmm. co-stars etc i'm sure that's the the most boring thing in the world for them to talk about and yeah. plus who wants to be a snitch yeah and yeah about their colleague so i'm sure you know when you've asked a question like that enough times somebody or so, like you so. talk to the quarterback and it's like trying to talk trash about his lineman and you know it's like come on dude like i don't yeah, want to talk about that yeah I, I you know hopefully those become fewer and fewer and far between yeah. over time so be, so you you I get, you're in LA. You're on. You're now on all these shows. You're now doing all this. Like, are, are, are you like I've made it? Um, I don't know that I ever felt that way. I mean, I will say being able to get out of credit card debt. So that was a big moment. That's mm-hmm. a big. And you met your wife in LA. I met my wife in Los Angeles. She's from Birmingham, Alabama originally, but she had moved there for a job and loved it too, and ended up spending a lot of time there. That's cool. Uh, as then, a LA resident. And then how'd you how'd you wind up back? Were you did y'all get restless in LA? Do were you wanting something more? I wouldn't say so. I, you know, I there's a whole big I'm sure you guys I don't have to explain to you. Texas, California sibling rivalry. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I grew up that way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. California's Did you but you you were there almost twenty years. Yeah, so, a long time. so at this point you're like, I'm a Calif like you've I've been, been there a long time. Yeah, I got the uh-huh. driver's license, I got the uh, you know bought uh-huh. a house, had the address, the whole nine yards. Um I loved it. I loved the weather. I loved the diversity of people. I loved the opportunity. I love, mm-hmm. I mean, it really is a place where if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you can make stuff happen. And there's so much energy. It, it, there's it, so it, much palpable energy of people doing really neat yes, things. Yes. It's inspiring. It really is. It is a, it's a place where so much happens, not just in the entertainment mm-hmm. world. Uh, and you know, some people don't like it, which is fine, but I feel like if you don't like it, you're looking for stuff not to like, cause yeah. there are certainly things, the traffic and the smog and the, it's, you know, there's a lot of fake aspects to the mm-hmm. entertainment industry, but I felt like it was going to be what I made of it. And I feel like I made, mm-hmm. made a lot of really good friends. Um, had a lot of really positive growth experiences there, had some great job opportunities. Like it was hard, but it also, so were you looking for a new job or were you, so my time at the NFL network was coming or my contract was coming up the contract was coming and up. I felt like given the position I was in and the guys that were ahead of me in the pecking order, I really didn't see myself passing those guys up. Mm-hmm. So do I roll the dice and try to sign another contract and stay there and tread water? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was kind of the consideration. Well, around that same time, Channel 8, the opportunity opened up on their morning news show, Daybreak, and 
I had kind of in the back of my head thought. Were you staying in touch with people in Texas? Like, how did you even know that? My agent knew about it. Your agent knew about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I had, I mean, I came back here all the time. I came back. Because your family's six or seven times here? a year. Okay. I your consider, brother's here. and Yeah. 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 I always consider myself one, one foot in Texas, one foot in California. So I was back here all the time. But it always been in the back of my head. If I ever moved back, I'd want to work for Channel 8. Mm -hmm. That's where I interned. That's the news station I watched yeah. growing up. That was a place that I really thought. I'd like to be, and morning news was something I had not done and really wanted to do. Hmm. Um, you hadn't, you hadn't done morning news. Before no, that. but I had done it for the NFL. Okay, a morning, yeah, but that, yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah, but to me, it was a combination of everything that I loved. Let's talk about sports, local news, entertainment, politics, mm -hmm. national news. You know, you have a, a morning news team where you've got some camaraderie that hopefully is part of your broadcast. That really appealed to me. Mm -hmm. So those were kind of two bucket list items for me. Were one, doing a morning news show, and two, working for Channel 8. So when that opportunity came up around the time that I was uh, wrapping up a contract at NFL Network and having mm -hmm. to decide on do I stay, it was, again, one of those situations where I just knew that. It's a sliding door moment. I could either stay here or I do. Yeah, you and, felt I, and it, again, and you felt I knew it. I, it, was, it was not a, a real decision. It was an opportunity, and I felt pulled toward it so you pl applied for it yeah and Got the it. whole time I, yeah yeah and uh you know you're nervous about will this work out the way i want to did your did your wife feel the same way she was ready to make some changes i think you know la is not the easiest place to live there's friction mm -hmm. everything there's friction you want to go to the airport there's traffic <laughs> it's a little you know, harder stinks everything's harder yeah yeah you yeah. want to go to a restaurant did you get reservations ah too bad you go to the grocery store you park a mile away mm-hmm so everything's just harder. And I think she was ready for stuff to be easier. And I, I felt like I told her, well, part of that's we have young kids. Yeah. Everything's hard. Yes. Yeah, so y'all had kids in yeah, LA. Had our three kids. Um, so and you're gonna lugging be them around what. and waiting and all. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I also think that change is a very, very good thing and really promotes growth. So I didn't have any plans to leave, but I was open to leaving for the right opportunity. And the fact that in the back of my head, this had always been the right opportunity if it ever came up and it came up when your it, hometown station on yeah. the, the morning you the know full circle the place i'd interned and yeah. the, the only place only station i ever really watched so they called you and like you we want you let's, what? let's, it's, let's come on home wow yeah and so and y'all so you moved back when this was uh june of 2019. okay so you moved back so you've, so you've now been yeah. wfaa uh abc for a little almost over three yeah, it'd be three years next summer. And we, and you moved back in 2019? Yeah. And that's kind of a hard time. <laughs> you moved back in 2019 and then COVID happens. Yeah. That's kind of a hard time to get adjusted. Yeah, and it, it was an adjustment because, you know, you're rebuilding your friend groups. You're reconnecting with people you haven't seen and been around in a long time. For Brooke, she'd never lived here, my wife. Um, she hadn't lived here, so it was that trying to make friends and, and get plugged in and connected. And, and her, her job let her work remote. She has a really cool job. Can you yeah. talk about what she does? Yeah. She, my wife uh, works for a company that uh, fights. Uh, it promotes online safety, basically, mm -hmm. is the easiest way to put it. So online safety, a lot of them work remotely, do their mm -hmm. work online. It's a technology company. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> she'd work from home always, so that was an easy transition. Yeah. But my schedule, going to work at you know, 2, 3 in the morning, going to bed at 6 o'clock at night, that was a massive, massive adjustment and in a new city and trying to get plugged in and then COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was, you know, but again, that's the grind, man. Yeah. That's the, but you're do, do you doing something you love. Like, do, yeah. you, do you really enjoy? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, I've always been a big believer in the need and power of uh, local news. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, I mean, it's been a tricky time for the news business for a long time, but mm -hmm. I think it is just as important as it ever has been. Yeah. And viewers get their news from a variety of different sources now, but I still feel like you you need strong local news mm -hmm. to be invested in your community yeah, um, and, and to make the decisions in a democracy that matter. I mean, you know, when you want to speak about it from a lofty perspective. And people love you. You've done a really good job. Well, I don't know about the first part of it I or think the second, so. yeah. but I appreciate you saying that. I, it, it's hard because you go into the studio and you talk to the camera. Yeah. You know, no, you've got, you got I, six or eight people in the studio, and I think— I follow you on Instagram, and 
I think Facebook too. But I see like all the comments, you know, like you like you see the people who are like interact like then you can tell like these are fans. They, like, but do you feel like whenever you came in, like, oh, who's the new guy? Who's no, the new face? No, because they, they positioned it as like welcome back. Yeah, they did a really they really okay. did a, a good job. Um, I think in rolling out the red carpet for me and welcoming yeah, me home. I, I, I'm I very feel like it was a, yeah. they uh, one, and that's kind of the nature of our show too. Is yeah. We kind of go big or go home. Yeah, it was um, like a big, and it was like an announcement. He's coming back home from L.A. He's done all this cool stuff. Yeah, Welcome they were back. really uh, very, very gracious. And you, um, and you have a big like, kind of Fort Worth bent in the in the coverage too. You know, because because especially the station is is in Dallas, but you're like the Fort Worth boy. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, I mean, I'm from Fort Worth. It's mm-hmm. part of my DNA, I like to think. Um, and for me, that's North Texas in general. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, Fort Worth and Dallas are two different cities yeah. and with two different vibes and personalities. And I'm a product of Fort Worth. Yeah. So I like the fact that I get to work in Dallas and I get to experience so many of the cool aspects that Dallas has to offer and that I am able to maintain my Fort Worth roots and, and try to represent, you know, Fort Worth stories when I get the mm-hmm. chance to. And, um, this is this is a cool place to live in general. Yeah, I, I don't have to tell you guys that. It's, I think it's fascinating if you've traveled at all, or lived any place else. You were the fifth largest media market in the country. That's, That's cool, cool. That's but good. it doesn't really feel that way when you. So you're, it is like you're at top level of morning. Yeah, top five, man. I mean, yeah. that's a big deal. But but we are relatively affordable to you know when it and, comes and to morning cost of news living and, is more fun than like nighttime news i think it is it's a very different it's a, it always has had a different feel it's yeah, like, it's like so. the more positive fun well i think that's what hopefully people are looking for in the morning as well mm-hmm. when you're getting ready for your day you've got the tv on in the background you're shaving yeah. making cereal getting the kids ready getting out the door it's a little more entertainment stuff. based yeah and you uh, you obviously want people to know about what's happening in the world mm-hmm. and do right by the stories that you're telling. Um, but I think there are opportunities, especially when you have a two and a half hour show, yeah. there are opportunities to tell some stories that are irreverent, to put a smile on someone's face before mm-hmm. they leave. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm someone who thinks there are enough reasons. <laughs> you know, life is hard. Yeah. There are enough reasons yeah. not to smile. Like, let's find some too. Yeah. Smile. Yeah. I like that. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're back. Appreciate can, that. Can, I, I have like all these like technical questions about how it all works yeah i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna transition this a little yeah, bit and like let's pepper, do it. pepper you with some questions um okay because this is so fascinating like like specifically speaking like morning news mm-hmm. so is everything uh is it all teleprompted are you are you writing it or are you like given a script so we have a team of producers that are putting together the shows they put together the show and they are writing the news writing the shows for us right okay so you sh- you show up and they're like here's here's the script or are you are you help, like saying i want to cover this today they're here just are you are you like looking for stories well, or are they usually usually there's communication prior to each day you know okay. so we've talked the day before we've talked throughout the day if there's a breaking news story we've Do you have a meeting in. after the show we have a meeting before and after okay and are you like this was good this is bad and the tomorrow we're gonna yeah, talk about this totally all of that and if there's something that Hey, you know what? This is happening in Fort Worth, and I really think we should cover it. Uh, you know, okay. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to go live from there? Do you want to send a reporter? How do you want to handle it? We have those conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've had input into what's going on the next day. They, the show is mostly written about the time we show up, but I'm also a big believer that, you know, I, if I'm going to say something, I want to have had some input on it. So yeah. you'll go through and you'll tweak stuff and make some changes. Do you kind of read it out loud, or do you like get together in a room and read it, or no? I mean, because some of it's not. You know they're still getting it together because especially if it's if it's they're news. getting it together like literally right because before if it's back. news yeah, it you happened, don't know everything happened like yet. thirty minutes ago but that was two hours yeah earlier yeah you know, you know? what what we knew yeah. at four thirty might be different than what we knew at six thirty yeah so you got to be on your toes yeah and you need to know what's going on in the world I mean that was the thing at the NFL Network is you can't you can't just read the football <laughs> news you need to know what it means you know you yeah. know you can't just read about. Yeah. Uh, uh, Derrick Henry's injury, you need to know that the Titans are really relying on him this year yeah. in order for that to have context. And that's the same thing with the news we cover. You know, we had a big school bond uh, election this past week. And if you live in Fort Worth and your kids go to public schools, you have insight mm-hmm. and thoughts and perspective on, you know, how that money should be used and what the needs are. And so all that informs mm-hmm. the stories that you're talking about. Um, but, so, But then when you get up there, mm-hmm. 
you you're re- you're reading your tell it's a teleprompter right like you're reading yep. you're reading a thing and you don't necessarily know you kind of have an idea of what it is but you hopefully i mean ideally i should know i should have recently read it and put are my you just like on it. are you just a really good fast reader that you're able i to- am that yeah but but like you know this the the famous scene in Anchorman where he's like and f you San Diego <laughs> you know, it's like would you do that like would so you so I, 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 I will uh, not, not say that, never I'll not say never not I mean I wouldn't extreme, drop the F-bomb, right but not I, that I will extreme. not say never because the the hard part is a lot of times you're mentally juggling a lot of things yeah yeah you're mentally spinning some plates you got someone in your ear yep. telling you hey thirty seconds going to toss the weather yeah. uh, hey. This story's dead. Move on to the next one. So in your mind, you're thinking... Oh, you're, they're killing stories, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, you know, uh, yeah. for time or they lost it or whatever. So you're reading it and trying to deliver it in a way that really gives it the story it's due. Yeah. And also thinking about, oh, what are we doing next? What are we doing? Da, 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 da. Yeah. And so there are times when you go into autopilot mode and you're, you're just yeah, getting just... the copy because you're thinking about five of... You know, your brain's only capable of so yeah, much multitasking. That's right. That's right. So that happens. Uh, but I think if you're really engaged and really know what you're doing with that story, it shouldn't happen. Uh, yeah. And you should also be bringing things to life in the copy as well. Do I mean, you ever spin, spin it off and kind of start doing your own thing a little bit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your um, own flair. Well, I, I'll sometimes that's kind of when the of, magic happens too. It's when you put your personality in it. Well, I think also that's where you are connecting with an audience because mm-hmm. anybody, you can go find a thousand people who can read a script yeah. Yeah. to a camera, but who has perspective on the story, knows what it means, knows what questions the viewers at home might have. So let's say it's COVID vaccinations and you're reading a story about how they approved it. They haven't said yet how you can make your appointments. As soon as we find that out, we'll let you know. Yeah. That's a question someone at home would have that mm-hmm. may not be in the copy, but yeah. you thought of it because you're a parent, you've got kids, and you wondered it, and you, mm-hmm. you added that to it. So now yeah. someone at home who has that question, it's been answered. Yeah. So I think that's a part of it as well. And, you know, that's also where being plugged into a community, being from an area is so huge because otherwise you lack the – local perspective that might be really necessary so yeah. you're doing you're also like reading the or watching the news or reading the newspaper like when you get home to keep up with. yeah and luckily there's a there's some momentum that goes there where if you have stayed on top of it you don't have to start from scratch every single day and also some osmosis but do they are they like are they calling like i'm assuming your phone has to be on all, all the time because they're like tomorrow don't show up the studio you're gonna send you here like, yeah yeah the day uh, it doesn't end do you it, wake up sometimes and you're like oh this is not what i thought i had to do but yeah absolutely you know they're uh, i'm trying to think of an example um you know i, I the, the big pile up on interstate 35 right before the winter storm that's last, right, whenever yeah. that was january february however many cars or 100 some odd cars in this pile up and gotta go out and cover it the next day get down there um, gonna be live in it happened right ice. at the end of our newscast the prior day mm-hmm. and so i think they made the, the decision overnight i think it was overnight but you wake up and like all right we're gonna do this instead of what we thought mm-hmm. and that's part of it yeah i've always been blown away at just how fast stuff moves because we we've been on a, i've been on a handful of morning shows music wise we've been on good morning mm-hmm. texas a handful of yeah. times uh but like it's just so fast paced and like and then cutting to here and then cutting to here and then cut like it like it gives me anxiety even thinking about it because how quickly especially everything... if it's live yeah yeah it's live and yeah and it's and then it's literally there's like a counter and the commercial is about to happen you got to get these lines out and I mean it it's a it's an art um, okay what was some of my other questions uh, I have one okay do you do any voice this is kind of silly but do you do any voice exercises like uh, to warm up your voice or do you just wake up sounding like that. Like I don't. Yeah, Lucy I appreciate that you're a complimentary. Like I don't know this. that I feel that way. I, I definitely feel like some mornings it's there, and some mornings it's not. Uh-huh. Uh, so no, I don't do any. I mean, the cup of coffee I'm hoping is what really gets you get you, get you warmed up and <laughs> caffeinated. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you have to like? Do you have any tips on like speaking with clarity? And did you have to learn some of that? Like, did you have any weird ticks that you had to get rid of? Or do you have a Texas accent ever that you had to like intentionally whittle away at? It's funny that you asked that because when I lived in California, 
and people would know that I was from Texas would say, oh, you don't sound like you're from Texas. I think I'm someone who sounds like wherever I am at the moment. Uh -huh. And when I would come back to Texas, I'd pick up y'all and I'd kind of draw things out mm -hmm. and sound like George W. Bush, you know, just kind of round everything uh -huh. off. And so I, I, fall, I can fall back into that. Uh -huh. But I think in certain situations that, you know, that are more professional or, or presentation based, I get away from it. You know, verbal tics, the ums and the ahs. I had a producer one time that pointed out that I would say, you know, all the time, <laughs> you know, when you're da -da 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 -da, you know, and da -da -da -da, it's like how people say like, yeah, mm -hmm. all the time. So when you start becoming aware of those things and keeping them front of mind, hopefully you can eliminate them, eliminate them. But you ask for tips. I think trying to speak more slowly. Okay. The brain is capable of thinking it Let's just make up a number, 300 words a minute, something amazing. But you can only talk at, let's say, 127 or whatever, you know. So you intentionally say, slow my pace down. I, I need to do a better job of that, I think, actually. You, but that would be a great tip uh -huh. is if you can slow yourself down, just those few extra milliseconds can help you better articulate what you want to say. Yeah. So. Doing this podcast, I have noticed listening back to myself, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I say okay a lot, like yes, and then and then I I will kind of mumble and speak really quick. And you I just, you should never have said that because now everybody yeah, listening yeah, but, uh, I, from I, now I on it. is going to be like, oh, there he goes there again. The rest of the podcast. Well, the, the two yeah. tips I've heard from on air coaches and and consultants when it comes to assessing your own stuff, listen to it where you can't see the visuals, and then watch it with the sound turned down. So. The listening oh, to it will help you idea. focus on what you're saying, how you sound. Okay. And then watching it with the sound turn off, turned off helps you focus on how you look. Do you have mannerisms? Are you moving too much? Are you not moving enough? You know, mm -hmm. you have some people who are like monotone bodies that never move when they're talking and other people that are all over the place. Yeah. I'm more of the... Well, and you're you're tall and have like long arms yeah. too. Like you... <laughs> You have a I'm life. very yeah. When I'm on air, I think I'm pretty <laughs> expressive with the hands and all that stuff. I I I read this book once that was all about like how do you win people over or something. I can't remember. It, it was about it was about like a how do you influence people or something. But one of the tips was talk with your hands and makes people feel safer. Okay. Because it's like this like uh, evolutionary. We're always trying to protect ourselves. So if you can't see someone's hand, you're like, do they have a weapon? Do they not have a weapon? Do they can what they're doing. And so if you show them your hands, huh. you're like, there's like something in the brain that like makes people feel comfortable. It's like I'm, when you I'm, walk up to a horse, you should like you're gonna, if you're going to pet a horse, you're just to like approach where yeah. they can see your hand. I'm just laughing at the the viewers on at the home. You're like, does he have a weapon? You know, like, <laughs> he's going to shoot me through the TV. Oh, I see his hands. He's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Your lizard brain uh, yeah. is thinking yeah, that. Though. And so it's like great speakers will like have their hands up and use their hands. And I'm sure there are mounds of research on that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, focus groups they've done and. All that. So, okay. Random question. Health and sleeping. Mm -hmm. So, okay. The, 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 the craziest thing about what you do is that you, you get up at what time? About 2.30, 2 2.45. That, and so you're, you you're up. That's, get, that's, that's I just want to clarify. Get up at 2.30. I mean, yeah. that's insane. You're, what's it called? Circadian rhythms. Power. Is that, is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Circadian. Yeah. Like, Whack. Totally jacked up. Yeah. So w when I don't have sleep, like this this week, I woke up in the middle of the night a couple nights and I just felt like crap. And mm -hmm. It just it affects everything. Sleep affects everything. If you do not have enough sleep, you're like not the best version of yourself. How do you, how do, you do that? Like how do you... Especially for being on, you got to you, you. You're not just going in and working on a computer. You got to. You have to on. think about thirty things, thirty like things. he just talked about. Yeah, I mean, definitely. When I first started in the mornings, it was really, really hard, mm -hmm. really hard adjustment because I had gotten up early for plenty of shows in the past, but not five days a week. And then at four thirty, you're on for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. It was never like that. So that was a really massive adjustment, and I was physically just beat. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were mornings where I would be in such a mental fog. Mm -hmm. And I was making a bunch of mistakes that I hadn't made since I was beginning. Reading teleprompters, reading copy poorly and stumbling over my words and blanking on names and questions and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And it was just a, a haze. Yeah. And I think the light bulb turned on. I thought, you know what? Would I want to fly in an airplane with a pilot who got four hours of sleep? I mean, what I'm doing is not flying an airplane. Mm -hmm. But... I wouldn't trust a doctor to operate me if I'm on no sleep. Yeah, that, I that's what I mean. If I don't have enough sleep, you're, you're not 
because Performing. they're not functioning at yeah. their highest capacity. Mm -hmm. I'm not functioning at my highest capacity if I haven't got enough sleep. So that was really hard the first, I'd say, four to six months. Mm -hmm. Eventually, your body adjusts, for better or worse. Uh, and now there's, I mean, I'd say I'm not getting a full eight hours ever. Six hours? Maybe, oh, if I'm wow. lucky. I mean, six hours, if you go backwards from that, would mean me going to bed at about 6.30. Or let's see him do my Do you do that? No, it'd be about 8.30, 8, right? 8.30, yeah. Hey, but really being asleep at 8.30, mm -hmm. getting up at 2.30. That Which means you got to like get in bed at like 7.45. Kind of to wind down. Yeah. Yeah. My wife gives me a hard time because, okay, I'm going to bed and she'll come down 30 minutes later and I'm still awake. I'm like, I, you got You got to unwind. You got to kind of like unpack the day and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of ease into that. So, yeah, I'd have to go to bed at 8.30 uh, on the dot and you're still, that's six hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you you still want to find two hours someplace else. And also, two plus six does not equal eight when it comes to eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's it's not, I mean, based on your sleep rhythms and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it is a constant struggle. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, I, I can function off of not a lot of sleep. But in an ideal world, like what is it, how do, do you, do you, are you pretty regimented about trying to go? No. You're not. I know, and I should be. So I you really just, should be. If there's like a party or a, a function, it's like, well, I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna sleep less. There was one last night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a buddy drove over from Dallas. We went to an event, and it was like, well, I had a nap today. It's Friday tomorrow, um, and this is the kind of thing that's good to be at. I think personally yeah. and professionally. Yeah. So you know, it's it's a balancing act. Gosh, man. Um, yeah, but do you, you get you used to naps? it. I just, yeah, I do take naps. I love naps. I'm a, I'm a big fan. <laughs> well, you have Life's to be now. Life's greatest pleasure. I love naps. Yeah. My rule, though, for naps is I won't take a nap in my bed because then it becomes a sleep. <laughs> That's, That's a whole, I mean, I feel like you could have a whole podcast on that. Yeah. You know. I do a nap on the couch. I might get on top of the covers on my bed, but I will not get in the bed. Otherwise, I'll I'm fall a, asleep. I am a very good napper. How long do you nap for? Well, I would say <laughs> I don't nap. If I nap for two nap. hours, that would be a really long nap yeah, for me. That's a, that's a sleep. Um, I mean, even if I get thirty minutes, I'm at least at something. Yeah, but, but I mean, I'm one of those guys. If I fly on an airplane, I'm asleep before we take off. Mm -hmm. That's y'all are crazy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm do you excellent do you, So what? What is your? What is? Can you tell me? Walk me through just like your routine, like your morning, because I, I geek out on this kind of stuff. Yeah. So like, two forty-five alarm goes off. I usually. Uh, I don't advertise this, but whatever. Okay. I usually will like go, we have our closets are in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'll go into the closet and I'll like lay down on the floor and I'll scroll through the emails to catch up on the emails. Like on your morning. back, you're laying on the floor? Yeah. Really? And <laughs> why, not, why are you not doing that in the bed? Just to Because wanna... my wife's asleep. Oh, okay. So you um, walk in. But it's kind of like my transition. <laughs> just like I'm just like I'm transitioning to sleep. That's my transition to being awake. You yeah. lay on the floor. Catch up the e on the emails. Uh -huh. There's not really a place to sit in the bathroom either. Yeah. You know? I like uh, it. I'm into yeah, this. And so yeah. and I'll scroll through the catch up on, you know, what do I need to be kind of aware of? Get up, do the shower, shave, get ready the whole nine yards, uh, get dressed, out the door. Uh, you drink coffee? Not on the way. Okay. Uh, I'm try. I try to limit my coffee consumption to a cup a day. Okay. Although I'm getting caffeine through diet cokes, but this one counts. You drink diet cokes? Yeah. How many diet cokes do you drink a day? Two. <laughs> that is not. Those are not good for you. The aspartame. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> used to. I used to uh, limit myself to Fridays only, and I'm off that. So that was a, that it's was off a, the I wagon. Did that for Lent one year. So so coffee. No coffee. You're just. You're just. Are you like still in brain fog mode? Not really. I mean, again, okay. that's part of the adjustment is I'm okay. pretty adjusted by now. Okay. Uh, to get to work, then I get the coffee for to be on air with the coffee. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a whole thing for me, be on air with the coffee. Because so, you, you get to hold something. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's a like vibe. I feel like it's, uh, if I'm at home having coffee and they are too, I feel some kinship, you know, if I'm yeah, watching somebody yeah. on a morning show. Again, it's a psychological hands thing. Yeah. See my he doesn't have a, He doesn't have a knife. He has He's a coffee a mug. He's yeah. great. He's like me. <laughs> so get to work. Uh, we record some stuff for the show usually. I'll go over the scripts and, and you know, if there's any tweaks I want to Like some, right some uh, like promoters or bumpers. Kind exactly, of. yeah. Do our, our cold opens, we call it. Um, get ready, get dressed, get made up the whole nine yards and boom. All right. Do the show. Makeup. Is that yeah. something you just got to... You, you do makeup. They're, yeah. They're doing your hair. They're doing your makeup. You got, and I'm you are it. just... Oh, you, you got do a lady? It. Yeah, or a, a guy? I got a guy named Mark Iztook. You yeah. do your own makeup? Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're a professional at putting on I mean, I would say I, I'm sure 
that a makeup artist would be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. You are messing it up. Yeah. Uh, at, at NFL Network, we had somebody. You'd come in the chair and the chair, and they'd do uh-huh. the whole thing. And so what are you What are you trying to cover up? Wrinkles? What are you trying to, I'm are you, just... You're shiny. You're just We're trying to shiny. pop. I'm just, you just, here's the you thing. You want to pop or what? No, you don't want to pop. You're too shiny. Well, oh, okay. or the right? thing is like you, it, cameras, especially modern cameras, they take really good pictures and and your flaws are exaggerated when you're on camera. So it just kind of softens it. It's like, you know, if you take an Instagram picture with the soften filter on, uh-huh, that's uh-huh. what it is. Do you have makeup on right now? I hadn't taken it off. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, I don't come home and wash it off. Yeah. So, so. I, I, this is terrible. I'm sure this is like the worst skincare regimen. I just I take the shower the next morning. Yeah, you don't. And you I don't, don't like. You don't yeah, do a makeup but I'm not remover. putting on a lot either. Like I'm just doing a thing, and it takes me like 60 seconds. Oh, okay. Just, Man. Yeah. All right. That's it's so interesting. So you just put it on, you just leave it on the whole day. Yeah, I don't. I mean, like, I feel like it, it has to fall off, right? Like, or does it evaporate? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I know. think all. I think women are like, you're such an idiot. Right yes, you're like, and I am you're, okay with that. Yeah. I am you know fine what? to be an idiot when it comes I, to makeup. Like, I think part of the reason. Women have to do all this crazy skin stuff is because they're putting stuff on, they're picking it off, they're putting it on, and taking it off. It's like if you just well, left no, it, yeah, just that, leave it alone. Whole, yeah, I I, like, if you just <laughs> left it alone, it would probably be. I, we don't know anything. There's about a whole this, beauty yeah. standard thing there too that I feel like is maybe self reinforced. Uh huh. Well, if nobody wore makeup, then we would all be on equal footing. Yeah, exactly. Except whenever you're on camera, and it's all like, like in your face. Yeah, you know. I, but again, I guess I feel like it's because we have an idea of how it should look. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, so it's you all those film. beautiful people out there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's all God, the flawless. Man, skin. I hate those people. Do you yeah. do you do, uh, you work out? We took a picture and I like touched your back. I'm like, yeah, you play it works out. No. <laughs> That's a weird comment. Left over. <laughs> I was you lift, like, you, yo, 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 <laughs> you, you, you lift, bro. Yeah, you lift. Yeah, but do you? But you don't work out before you go. No, that would be my dream. I mean, ideally, I would like to work out before work. Yeah, but you uh, work out yeah, after. That's insane. Yeah, and not anywhere near as much as I should be. The COVID and and uh, kids. COVID and kids. Yeah. Um, make actually COVID for some people has helped them, but yeah, it, it's it, an helped, it helped me. And be like, I'm stuck at home. I'm, That's great, man. I'm work out. Well, good for you. But you, but it's a part. And when you get home, do you take a nap when you get home? Depends on the day. I also like how am I feeling. I'll try to like it, ride the sleep rhythm cycle. So, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? This feels like this is this is when I need to take a nap. Mm-hmm. I'm not tired yet. I'll do it later. That kind of thing. Uh, okay, I uh, uh, wanted to ask you. So before we kind of like go in lightning round real quick, um, you know. I, f- I feel like, you know, the the news, just the local news, it's like whenever you're growing up or when we were growing up, people our age, it's like, you know, your weatherman, that's your boy. Mm-hmm. Or like your sports, Dale Hansen is like, that's your guy. Like, that's my best friend. I talk to him every night, right? Sure. You know, as, and so obviously that has transitioned completely. But yeah, pe- you feel like you know them. Yeah, you feel like, and they are local celebrities for sure, too. And, but now, I mean, and we have a lot of 20 somethings, I mean, literally 22, 23 people age people working for us gen y yeah mm-hmm. gen y and i'm like where do you get your news facebook you know or they don't say facebook. no they, they don't, don't say facebook. they don't say facebook they say you know mm-hmm. whatever whatever talk or tiktok <laughs> yeah tiktok and someone talks about it as a joke the news as a joke and that's it like like there is no other news source or maybe a maybe twitter you know i think they also might get like scrolling news on their phone yeah of course yeah. of course and so you know obviously that's like I mean, as a, a TV host, a broadcaster, anchor, like you are, you know, it's like, well, come on, you got to look at me. Like, this is my, the, like, you're, you're getting the news from me. So like, what, what do you, like, what's your opinion on that? Or do you embrace it? Or is it like, kind of like this, like, dang, man, I wish we could do it. Are you just like, do you enjoy it? Are you like always looking ahead? I'm sure that's talked about your production team all the time. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of aspects to what you're describing. Um, and I think it's a double-edged sword in that you've got this democratization of how we get our news, yeah, which is good in a lot of ways. Uh, I think it's, it's helpful to have diverse voices. It's helpful to have diverse perspectives represented in what stories are covered and in how they're covered, how they're told. Uh, however, I think that we, and I want to be careful how I phrase this, we have this situation now where I think This idea of do your own research is kind of this gold standard for a lot of folks, except too often, I think doing your own research, whatever that means, ends up being go find something that supports your 
already in, held perspective. In your own little vacuum that you live in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you get on Facebook, it's the people that think just exactly like me. Yeah, and look, I'm not going to pretend that the news media has a perfect track record, that every journalist <clears throat> is this bastion of unbiased truth. I, I, it's not. It's They're people. Yeah. They're people that are fallible, um, just like a doctor, just like an attorney, just like any other profession. But I do bristle at some of the criticisms of, of media that that makes it like every single member of the news media has an agenda, an axe to grind, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not why I got into this you, business. You don't have like a secret agenda? To- <laughs> no. I mean, I have I have a belief system. Yeah. Um, and that belief system, I won't pretend that it doesn't factor how I see the world, but I hope that I also have some tether to objectivity where I can call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. And do you, you don't feel like, <clears throat> at least on the local network, lo- local shows, you don't feel like uh, that, I mean, obviously, like, different networks, like, I mean, Fox, if it's, like, more conservative. Like, I mean, like, is that, like, the stories that get aired, is that, like, a thing? But is it is it, I want to, like, pop this bubble. Of, sure. Because there is a facade that it's, like, okay, this network is definitely more conservative. This is definitely liberal. But, like, how much of that is a, of an agenda is talked about? Well, we can't play, can't do that story because, like, how much is that really talked about or not talked about? Yeah, you know great I mean? question. I yeah. think a lot of the <clears throat> the stuff you describe, you know, really plays out on the national level. Sure. Um, you know, you mentioned Fox News specifically. I would say that's less prevalent for the local Fox affiliates. Um, yeah. Because they have different news directors, different news agendas, different news people. Uh, but I think in general, if you – well, let's go big picture. Yeah. We live in a democracy, a democratic republic, however you want to phrase our system of government. But it demands that I think we be informed, active citizens, right? Yeah. Well, that's that's that requires some work. You know, it, it isn't just passive. It, it's not just you show up at the – polling place and just vote for whoever's got a cool ass name or whoever happens to belong to the political party du jour, I think it requires that you be an active, informed participant. And I think a component of that is a robust news media that speaks truth to power, holds people to account, tells the stories that need to be told, all of these lofty goals that I learned in history class and Elementary school, right? And so you think news has an important role to play Absolutely. in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also feel like it's – like I said before, it's a double-edged sword when you bring up diverse news sources because at the end of the day, there needs to be some level of accountability when you get it right and when you get it wrong. Mm-hmm. And Joe, Clu- Joe Q news guy on Facebook who has a blog and has no editor – and has no reason to retract a story that's incorrect, has no repercussions when he gets it wrong. Uh, there's no accountability there. And yet I think we have elevated some of those sources to the level of trustworthiness that other ones that do have some accountability have achieved. That does not mean that those sources get it right all the time by any stretch. But I think it's been my vast experience that is not due to lack of effort. That is not due to lack of trying. I mean, and, and meaning, what do you mean by that? You're not I mean, trying to put, you know, I've never been in a, I, personally, I've never been in a newsroom where I had a news director tell me how to tell a story to meet an agenda. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never dealt with that. I don't I think I've ever worked with anybody that I felt that way about. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to pretend that people don't have their own biases they bring to stories because, again, they're human beings. Mm-hmm. But the idea, the narrative that there's this big, huge, you know, overarching agenda being pushed, I think ignores the realities and is said by people who've never worked in a newsroom before. I, I, I will say, so I am admittedly really into conspiracy theories. I lo- <laughs> like, I love them. Do you have a tinfoil hat you're hiding behind you? I would potentially, but like I was into Bigfoot and stuff, like crazy conspiracy, like mm-hmm. all, all, like across the board. I just, I perk up a little bit. It's a guilty pleasure, sure. really believe, but it's just fun. And I, I remember like in, in college watching all these like YouTube videos about the Illuminati in the music industry and Beyonce and Rihanna and all this Illuminati. <laughs> But I, but then when I like got there, and I'm like, I'm at Universal Records, I'm at Capitol Records, I'm with the president of these labels, I'm with the biggest agency, and in, in, I'm at MTV. Mm-hmm. I'm like, one, no one is like that. Like they're just trying to figure out how to like 
do whatever their job is that like there's no they're they're making money they're like they're there to it's like a business so it's like you're making money yeah. so you're 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 going to you one, know, no one is like smart enough to like figure out how to control that whole thing and then yeah. two like there's just <laughs> when i saw behind the scenes I'm like and not that i thought there was illuminati really was controlling the music industry yeah uh, but i was like there's just for that to even happen mm -hmm. is so impossible that's what, what's it is it oxen's razor that says the most likely solution is usually the yeah the easiest uh -huh. yeah and i i think if you look at some of the conspiracy theories out there really mm -hmm. really this xyz thing is happening and all these people know and they've yeah. all just managed to keep a secret yeah. we can't keep a secret of who the next bachelorette's going to be yeah that's true. <laughs> that's true. you know that uh, so but, but i think it just defies do. logic but yeah. in, in, in your in your particular case too with the morning news again mm -hmm. this, there's also like an entertainment you, you're y'all are not covering hardcore political things as well we'll cover the stuff that we think people need to know about yeah. we are mm -hmm. not getting into the weeds um mm -hmm. but i think you know again if you believe that there's a responsibility uh you know we had a mayoral race in fort worth last year and, and it was really important to me that we talk we hear from the candidates yeah and that's probably the most politicized sort of mayoral race we've had in a long time yeah and, and you have uh because you're replacing a mayor who'd been here for a long mm -hmm. time been in office for a long time uh, so I, I, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, you're trying to serve an audience that is broad and diverse and again, in a top five media market and try to determine what are their interests. And this is also a difficult assessment. What do they want to know versus what do they need to know? Mm -hmm. Those aren't always the same. That's a things. hard decision to yeah. make. I mean, the Cowboys people. will always be big news in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> He's and, like uh, trying to shove I'm it sorry. into the, into the <laughs> pillow cushions. Those vibrating phones. If it's your producer, will you answer it? And Hello. We'll be like breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the so it's it's kind of like when you go to the doctor. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to take your medicine. Sometimes you need to know about these things that are happening in your city that affect mm -hmm. you, even if it may sound boring at first, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So I, that's always a hard thing when you're making news choices is, are you serving the audience what they want to be served, dessert, or are you giving them their vegetables? Mm -hmm. And that's... then and then you have a responsibility to make those vegetables palatable. Yeah. And it's, it's probably harder now more than ever because everything is so weaponized. Like we're so polarized as a, as a people. It's like you kind of screwed whatever side and however you present it, like, do, do you, do, have you had any, have you had any like backlash or haters that are like, he is a, I would whatever. say not, not terribly. Okay. Um, there've been a couple of instances and, uh, you know, if you get something wrong on a story that really matters to people, I think a lot of times there will be those who will assume the worst that you did it intentionally because mm -hmm. you're trying to push something. I yeah. have zero desire to, report something incorrectly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a believer that your credibility is the most important currency you have with the viewers because mm -hmm. if they, and, and it, all, even down to like, what's the spelling on a graphic? Mm. Because if I misspell someone's name on a graphic, if I can't be handled to, uh, trusted to handle the little thing, how can I be trusted to handle the big thing? Mm -hmm. And I, so I feel that way that that credibility is really. What? So I, I watched the interview where you were interviewing Dale Hansen on his mm. Re retirement and he 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 mentioned like he's like i don't i don't enjoy where the industry is going i don't and like what do you what did, what does that mean like it's granted someone who's been there for yeah i think long, well long one i think you have seen a diminishing role uh for local news at least when it comes to how many people sit down and watch mm -hmm. uh, but that's been happening for a long time it's been sure. a long steady decline um and you know you'll have spikes here and there and I, i'm not a numbers guy so i don't have the numbers memorized but that's just been a general trend so i think there's that aspect of it i think there becomes this desire to feed the beast you know you can argue about what tabloid magazines print but someone's buying that tabloid and so how much of it's feeding you know mm -hmm. the beast i think with the advent of cable news uh 24 hour cable news that brought out this need for well, now you have to keep keep feeding that. Yeah, you know, if you if you're going to put news on 24 hours a day, then you've got to come That's up with 24 a hours lot worth of, of news. Content, yeah. And so people come become kind of numb to stories that really matter and really have human connection, and and also the fact that you can get a story. I, I you know probably read a news story on my phone before someone watches it on television mm -hmm. for a lot of viewers. Yeah. No, so, I'm not the only one. 
So I think that that's maybe, I don't want to speak for Dale, but I think that may be one of the things he was referring to. Mm -hmm. And then it all, it, it forces us into situations where again, when an expert on a topic tells us that up is up and down is down, people want to say, well, I'm going to, I don't know if I trust mm -hmm. that guy. Well, he's liberal, so, or he's, a, he's, a, you know, it's like, yeah. he's conservative, so I don't believe that. And therefore I'm not going to listen. Yeah. Um, I get that. Uh, where do you see it going? Like, do you, do you ever see like this where it's like going back to like, man, you know what? I got so many news sources out here and so many, like so many things, news sources vying for my attention that I'm just, I'm going back to my local group. Like, do you see that going back to that? Like, or do you see it just getting a little bit more diverse or are you just, you guys going to have to just keep going with the trends? Like, I think it's a great question. Uh, I mean, I like to think that there is some equilibrium point where the need for that information, uh, is balanced by you know, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, think that there is a, a pretty in essential intrinsic need for those services. Um, and, and I would believe that whether or not I worked in this business. I just think that that's what democracy demands. Yeah. Um, I, th I think part of this, I think there will always, like, the on-air TV, I think there's always a need a need for that. Like, Especially on the local level. On the local level. Yeah. And, and there's and then there's an entertainment part of it too. Again, like it's 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 not just the news, it's also like this is my routine. It's part it's like fun, you know. Well, but, and we certainly have expanded how we share the news. I mean, Facebook pages and a YouTube channel. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Twitter you, accounts and the is, whole nine is, yards. You, is you're doing that, but then you're also I'm playing in these other fields too. Yeah. And, and they all are under the umbrella. And of, it deepens the connection. You know, I, I think so. Like the like the people that follow you on Instagram, that follow you on Twitter, you, I I would argue that you're probably more. They feel more connected to you than they did, you know, someone ten years ago who they only saw here. Now they're seeing somebody like behind the scenes. Some of you like you're. Yeah, and that's every industry. I mean, you know, I can watch a, a news show and yell at the TV screen. He's not going to yell back. But yeah. if I tweet at this person, they might respond or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, it's the same thing for. I mean, you've seen it definitely in the music industry uh -huh. over the past 20 years, how bands that used to have to come up and do the regular route and sign with a label have been able to leverage the power of social media mm -hmm. to become popular and make sales without ever having to sniff a recording studio in Los Angeles. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you can, I think, I think you, it, it, if you can play in both fields, it, it deepens it all and makes it more, I think so. Meaningful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, okay. Let's end it with some, some yeah. lightning round. Yeah. Let's questions. do it. Actually, well, before we do that, <laughs> I you, you haven't asked your like, legacy. Well, yeah. I, I, the, one, one more serious question. One more question. serious question you can answer. We can do it quickly. But um, any any leftover bucket list items still on the Mark's list of like, I really want to do this one thing or mm -hmm. and combined with the question of like legacy is is this spot right here? Is this kind of like. This like I'm come came back home. This is going to kind of like cement my or bookend my career. You don't have to answer that because you you know you'll never know. But there's something like you know it's like ah whenever this whenever I retire from this you know job I, I might want to do this one thing. Hmm. You know, it's a great question. You might not have an answer to it yet. It's a great question. Um, bucket list wise, I think. There's a part of me that always wanted to make a documentary. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what that documentary is. That's kind of lurk. That's kind of percolating in there a little bit. Yeah. You know, what would it be? What am I passionate enough about to walk out on that limb? Mm -hmm. Because it's not like you're guaranteed you're going to make any money off of it. And you're going to put a lot of time and energy and pr probably money into it. Yeah. So what do I feel passionate enough about that I would go take that risk? Sure. Uh, so that's yeah. a that's a kind of a, an idea. Um you know, when it comes to other career challenges, I feel very, very fortunate that I have gotten to do, I think, more than I ever set out to. Yeah. And I had this goal, ESPN Sports Center anchor at some point in time, which I didn't do, but I did so much other stuff that that again, eighteen year old me would have never dreamed of. And yeah. and gotten a chance to meet and work with and even call friends people that I would have never thought possible. Yeah. So that's a, a pretty big deal. Uh I served a stint on the board of trustees at TCU, a two year stint as a representative of the national alumni board. That was really cool. Mm. Uh, I would have never thought that that would have been something I would have gotten a chance to do is to, to be in that room. And, and that's a neat legacy. Yeah. When you look to. at, uh, you know, history, the school and everything, 
I think when it's all said and done legacy wise, I would hope that it's more personal than professional mm. that whatever impact I had on a person, an entity, a group of people, whatever, what was, was positive and, and served a good purpose. Yeah. So I know that's super overarching and free no, that's like good. back of a sugar box. I feel like, I feel great. like legacy is that, you know, I mean, legacy is that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What is, okay, I'm going to just pepper you with some questions. Lightning around? Uh, what's your favorite documentary <clears throat> to recommend? If you haven't seen this, you have to see this. It's such a cool oh, documentary. Geez. Or recently. Um, yeah, re yeah. And this is lightning round. I'm about to think about this. Uh, <laughs> I watched the documentary on social media recently on Netflix, and yeah. it is called... The Social, social Dilemma. Dilemma. Social Dilemma. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just a, a... I'm not sure if it's my favorite doc ever, but it's a recent one that I watched that really changes how you think about how our brains are wired for social media mm -hmm. crap, so basically. Good. Yeah, so good. All right, have you... Favorite Anchorman quote? No, oh, man. <laughs> oh, gosh, there's so many. I'm trapped in a glass case of emotion. Milk is a poor choice. Cannonball. Uh, stay classy, San Diego. Uh, yeah. I mean, that probably is the one. Uh, I think stay classy, San Diego was one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, Did you ever get to say that, like, in San Diego? No, uh, but news team is like whenever I'm writing emails to like some members of our uh, morning show, I'm, I'm like, hey, news team. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. News team assembles pretty good. Yeah. Have you, watched, have you watched Have you watched the morning show? This yeah, yeah, I watched the morning show. Yeah, it's pretty. It's good. It's yeah, it is. Although it drives me crazy. Like they're going out to dinner on a night when they've got to be up at five, six o'clock uh -huh. or five, whatever time they get up. Yeah. I'm like no one's out at nine o'clock. Yeah, on a regular night. I've enjoyed that show. Yeah. Uh, favorite book to recommend or give? Oh boy. Um, Do you have a book you've given or recommended to a lot of people? There is a book that uh, I read a number of years ago called Justice. And I believe it is by maybe Mike Sandel, maybe the name. Uh, anyway, it just breaks down a lot of different um, uh, philosophies on you know governance and uh, societal living, uh, utilitarian, utilitarianism, libertarianism, et cetera. And I think as people, we tend to be inconsistent with the rules we apply. Mm -hmm. um, that book talks about that. There's also a book called uh, Dangerous Wonder, Building a Childlike Faith by a guy named Mike Iaconelli mm. that I read when I was younger. And it just talked about, uh, from a spiritual perspective, um, you know, approaching uh, your faith in a way that, that one, of, of, of wonder, mm -hmm. and, and two, I think that is uh, compatible with loving people in the world. Hmm. Loving others. Cool. That sounds that sounds neat. Yeah. Have, uh, you, have you ever got to inter interview Bill Belichick or Marshawn Lynch? Like the two, like... I haven't. Oh, man. Yeah. Although I worked... Uh, a lot of the guys I worked with were tight with Marshawn Lynch. Okay. He is, he's a legend In, among the players. I, I just feel like uh, among the players and like media as well. Yeah. He is, he is he's legendary among the players for sure. Okay. He's like... There's just a couple of guys that the players almost universally are like, oh, he's a real one. And yeah. Marshawn Lynch is a real one. So, Jamie, just so you know, these are football people. And Bill, Bill, Bill is the coach. <laughs> football sprots. <laughs> yeah, coach yeah. Of the Ball sports. Oh, yes. He's Who's the other guy? Marshawn Lynch is like, I mean, I don't know who like that guy running is. back for the, the Bills and the Seahawks. And, and Raiders for yeah, a stint. Yeah. For, for one stint. But the, anyways, a whole long story about Marshawn. The Beast. I mean, he is, he's the legend. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah. Uh, okay, I've, this is a random question you might make fun of me for. Yeah. Uh, favorite men's, your go-to men's clothing company. Because you got to look sharp. Like part of your job is you got to show up looking sharp. Ooh, oh, my God. That's you got to be looking um, scrappy. Uh, I'll go, uh, I get my suits from Suit Supply. Suit Supply. Yeah. Is that online or is that a no, they've got a, store No, they've got a store in Dallas, but um, I like their variety of men's suits. You And you wear, you wear suits every day? You have to wear Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God, the, the juxtaposition of those two questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch, the beast. Where's your favorite uh, clothing? Yeah. Yeah. Suit supply, though. It keeps yeah. you looking yeah, it's, fresh. Yeah, it's a weird name for like a place that has like a, I mean, like literally. Yeah. Like okay. Supply suits. Mm -hmm. Favorite meal in Fort Worth and your favorite meal in LA. Oh, dude, this is tough. This is really tough. Let me think about this one. Um... Los Angeles, I'll go with that one first because there is a 
place called Sushi Bar. Okay. I think what's, it's heard of. I think suit it's Supply, it. Sushi Bar, like the name. <laughs> it's a generic name. Sushi Bar is like a speakeasy for sushi. You got to like knock on the door. It's a whole thing. Uh-huh. They only seat, I think, like eight people or something like that. I mean, nice. it's very small. Uh-huh. It's you and the two guys making the sushi and a bartender, and you're cutting up for however long it takes you to eat this meal. Wow. And is it really it good? Is, it is way overpriced yeah. and incredibly worth it for the fun and the food and the camaraderie and the experience. Um, been there with some friends a couple times, and that was just a neat dining experience. It's not even necessarily it's the best tasting food. I mean, it's pretty good. It's just a cool vibe. It's just a, it's a memorable experience. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I would say here, that's tough, man. I have a lot of local favorites. I grew up behind Cousins Barbecue on okay. McCart yeah. and ate many times there. I didn't like barbecue as a kid. I love it now. Uh-huh. But barbecue would be good. I mean, that's it's hard to turn down a King Cade's hamburger. Uh-huh. It's hard. An old, I, you know what? Put me in Old South at about one in the morning after a. You go to a movie and you're like, let's go get some ice cream or pancakes or something. Uh-huh. Like, I late, could, late night at Old yeah, South. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I got to get up in an hour. Yeah, breakfast. Yeah. Man, that's good. Uh, favorite TV anchor or broadcaster? Like, do you like to watch? Where you're like, man, I uh, I like respect the heck out of this guy. Oh, Girl. that's a great one. Um, well, I mean, I got to I gotta say Bob Schieffer, uh, okay. a TCU alum, CBS Face the Nation host for a long time, CBS mm-hmm. Evening News guy. Uh, big fan of just him, just a no-nonsense. Did you get um, to meet him? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Bob as a person and, and mm. uh, just as a broadcaster too, a news guy. Uh, there was a guy named David Gregory who worked for NBC News a number of years ago when I was at an NBC station. And he was just a really good, very conversational reporter. And he was embedded in Iraq uh, with a unit where he was in a tank for long periods of time and he developed deep vein thrombosis, died of a blood clot. Oh, wow. While he's overseas on assignment. And I remember just being really broken up by it. He's just a reporter Mm -hmm. on NBC Nightly News that I just happen to really enjoy watching. Yeah. Um, Tom Brokaw was always a lot of fun to watch. Brian Williams, pretty solid. Like, I met Brian Williams one time randomly in Los Angeles, as you do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, he, it's funny because he's got like a, you know, if you met him in real life, he's got kind of a different look and way of speaking, but that works for him on TV. So. Yeah. Did you have like a mentor or anybody like an older, was there any like older? Uh, I definitely had people that I encountered in my career that, that served that role, a boss at that Santa Monica cable channel, mm-hmm. a woman named Robin G who functioned in that way for sure, just really gave me some opportunities provided honest feedback a guy I worked with named Steve Grace at a cable channel in Los Angeles was kind of the same way I've had a few folks like that over the years for sure that's awesome well Mark this is good man this is yeah. great you guys are the best dudes I, this has been really cool I, I am honored to be here and this well, is a lot of fun your for me. story is really neat and I'm I am really 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 glad that you are back in Texas well I appreciate that and yeah. in Fort Worth and giving us giving us the goods man Every morning. Thank you. I, Every I try, morning. guys. Yeah. With that cup of coffee. Ready yeah, that one cup of okay. coffee yeah. and a bunch of Diet Coke. <laughs> can, you, can you send us out? Can you be like, tune in to Daybreak? It, da, da, da. Like, yeah. if yeah. you were doing an advertisement for Daybreak, could you just give oh, us a glimpse gosh, of that? Oh, gosh. I would say set your alarms bright and early Monday through Friday. Join us for Daybreak at 4.30 in the morning all the way to 7 o'clock. News, weather, traffic, everything you need to know to get you out the door. Yes. Yeah, so good. So good. So I love good. it. All right. Well, we're ending it there. <laughs> tune in to Daybreak, guys. <laughs> I'll see you then. <laughs> Awake or not. All right. Congratulations. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Stories with Soul. If you enjoyed the interview and like what you heard, please help us out and share, subscribe, and like anywhere you listen to podcasts. When you share and subscribe, it is insanely helpful and allows us to keep producing new episodes. You can always join us directly in the studio by watching the video version on our website, 6thavstorytelling.com. Stories with Soul is brought to you by 6th Ave Storytelling, an organic marketing company building standout brands on the foundation of story. You're obsessed with your business and we want to make the world obsessed with it too. Thanks for listening. Thank you.